alone. What? Hi. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Hi. How's it going? It is uh, Friday night here on twitch.tv slash saving throw show, colloquially known as saving throw. And we are so very glad to have you all joining us for another episode of Wild Cards. That, that's what this is. We are Wild Cards. So welcome, you mysterious strangers. Join us as we continue to wind our way from settlement to settlement in the weird west as members of Jebediah Nightlinger's Traveling Carnival of the Extraordinary and visit all the shadowy places in between, uh, like, like some of the places that we might be visiting tonight, but we'll get to that in just a little bit. My name is Jordan Capes Callerman. I am the ringmaster of these ceremonies this evening. Mm -hmm. And you all, whether you like it or not, or know it or not, are the mysterious strangers out there in the West who are forced to watch us through the magical window in front of you. Definitely forced, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, as long as you are on this page, watching this page, you are forced to watch us. So thank you. Thank you for uh, giving in and letting it wash over you. And let's we meet- We appreciate uh, it everyone else here at the table tonight, because it's not just a ringmaster. What is a ringmaster without m multiple rings? Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, let's meet the other people here at our virtual table this evening. So everyone, what I would like to know from you, and I'm sure what the folks at home are dying to know from you is your name, because I've never seen any one of you before in my life, nope. your character's name, and mm -hmm. a brief description of your character. This can be physical, this can be metaphysical, this can be ideological, it is up to you. And then finally, I have a question for each of you. If Nightlinger's Traveling Carnival of the Extraordinary is your home now, what was your character's home before? What place other than the carnival, if any, feels like home to your character? That is the question I would like you to answer tonight. And which one of you intrepid adventurers would like to go first? I'll go first. Very well. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Grob Galetti, and I play Victor Parrish, and I'm going to choose a metaphysical representation. Um, JCC is the ringmaster. I will describe what kind of ring Victor Parrish is. Victor Parrish <laughs> is the ring that you pick up in Sonic the Hedgehog because he is the fastest, and those are the fastest rings. So he's that uh, kind of ring. Uh, those um, rings the fastest? I would, I think I would, they're kind of stationary. Very stationary. Yeah, but you see them blurringly fast, so like they're pretty good. You need them to go fast, uh, and they're rings. So please don't interrupt me while I'm doing my intro. Also, he's right. He's right. We are Super we are rude. bad. We, we had to have a small metaphysical debate, and I think that was it. Uncool. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh. So the carnival is Victor's home currently. Uh. Who I'm trying to think of a way to do this without like spoiling his entire backstory, but I guess it, I guess. <laughs> You all know it's something to do with San Fran, so Shan, Shan, Fan. Shan Fan, not Don't worry, San I did Fran, the which is the, thing. cool, great, not just me. Um, so he, his home uh, before the carnival was in some part of Shan Fan. Um, I'll say that it was, um, it was an old distillery <clears throat> factory that he used to live in, and he specifically lived in um, uh, one of the actual tanks that was like hollowed out and made into a home for him, just him for, because those tanks aren't that big, but he was living in literally a distillery tank while he was uh, young. That was home for him. It felt very safe. It was literally one entrance, one exit, so he could always see what, what would come in and go out. So he felt very safe in this literal bubble that he lived in. Uh, who among us would not feel safe living in a distillery tank? Uh, thank you very much for sharing that about Victor with us. Yeah. Who? Would like to go, nope, sorry, no, you, uh, that was a rhetorical question indicating that all of us would be comfortable, Dom, so I don't want to see any of those hand raising things. <laughs> In fact, uh, you know what? I think you just volunteered yourself to go next, mister. Okay. One, two, wait, not push ups? <laughs> I don't think so, but it's been so long since I got this thing started, I can't remember anymore. That's okay. that's Buzz's metaphysical description. Yeah. <laughs> also, <laughs> push-ups. Yeah. Those yeah. weren't push-ups. Those were terrible. I don't know what those were. Uh, oh, you don't were know how. You those were bows. He was just bowing. You don't. You don't know. You have no idea. What this is what this. this is the kind of vibe that you're in for tonight, yeah. <laughs> uh, everyone out there. This is this is what we are tonight. So be ready for it. You never know what you're gonna get. <laughs> uh, hi, my name is Dom Zook and I play Buzz Callahan. Uh, and um, 
metaphysical description? Um, it can be physical, metaphysical, ideological. Oh, your choice. I'm just going to go with physical. That's the easiest for me to wrap my. It, it just brain has to around. be an ickle description. Okay. Um. Uh. Oh. Like icicle. It could be an icicle description. Yeah. Okay. As long as it's of Buzz Callahan. Yeah. <laughs> he. Uh. Imagine an icicle that has kind of strawberry uh, blonde hair, uh, a, a a mustache, and a little bit of a of a Van Dyke right. Uh, happening right here underneath his lip uh, a little bit of stubble some uh, his skin is kind of a a ruddy color kind of what you'd get if you've been out on the trail for a while uh, and otherwise he he dresses like me except he's got brown suspenders um, and uh, yeah that's him what was the other thing I needed to do um what if anything feels like home oh, to your character like apart from the carnival uh he uh he has a uh uh his family is from uh illinois and so he uh every once in a while he he will make a make a travel back to illinois and visit visit family um are you on good terms with your family um yeah he comes from a carnival family uh a, oh. a family of carnies and i believe i've said that before but uh you know i think you might have yeah mm -hmm. uh and um this this him working with nightlinger has been somewhat of a prestigious um get for the family um back when they were they were not uh getting as many jobs and stuff and so he's been he sends a little bit of his uh of his pay back to back to mom and pop but okay uh, yeah Ma mom pa callahan mom pa callahan all right well thank you very much for for sharing that little uh slice of uh weird west norman rockwell living with <laughs> us uh who would like to go next uh i will go Hi, I am Megan Caves and I play Celestina Moldovanu. Um, uh, metaphysically, Celestina- It doesn't have to be metaphysical. Is, um, I no, was trying something different and now I nope. regret it. Nope, it has to be. <laughs> uh, Celestina is like, um, I feel like she's like a candy bucket on Halloween. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. she just wants a lot of like interesting things but also wants to terrify you, but also wants to play with you. I feel like this is a good description of Celestina. Did you say Celestina is an empty candy bucket? Or a <gasps> she's a one? candy bucket. Just, she's she's half full, you know, half empty. <laughs> well, which, because this is a very important <laughs> both. She's both half full and half empty? I Yes, right, I know. What a disappointingly neutral thing to say. <laughs> All right. Well, that thank you. Rude. Thank you very much. Um, um, the styrofoam on. flavored candy bucket that's both half full and half empty. <laughs> I didn't talk about my home. Oh, that's right. You didn't. Um, I don't think, I, I think this is probably the first time in the majority of Celestina's life that she feels like she has a home. Her home was violently taken from her um, when she was about, I think I said six or seven and including her family and um she had to kind of make her way and stay away from certain people and there were a lot of people who weren't nice to her and she traveled around a lot to find a place that she could live uh so this is like this is super stable for celestina all right well i mean what's more stable than a uh, troupe of traveling performers uh back in the late 1800s if you yeah. can think of something uh, telegram it to us here at uh, a saving throw show. And then last but not least, we have... Hi everybody, my name is Jordan Pridgen and I am playing Midas Buchanan. And, um, hmm, I, I, uh, Midas is... It could be is... a normal description if you want, it doesn't have to be anything. Okay, <laughs> but, but think of Midas like one of those like rides <laughs> at, at state fairs that uh, look fun, but you're like never entirely sure that they're well made. And like, yeah, you probably are going to ride them, but you you do fear a little bit for your safety because because they're kind of like rickety. 
I and mean, I think that's Midas. A bit. It sounds very much like you're describing something along the lines of the of Nightlinger's Carnival's Discombobulator. I, I think he's um, a, he's a little close to the Discombobulator in in sort of a a kindred spirit sense, you know. It's got axes of movement you didn't yes. know existed. It's way fun, but like sometimes people die. Yeah. <laughs> um, All right. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, when when Midas thinks when Midas like thinks about like home, like something that feels like home, uh, he has a hard time like focusing on anything. Like he he gets distracted really easily uh, from that. So. He, he doesn't really, like, if you asked him about it, he probably wouldn't have a solid answer that he's able to, like, bring to mind. He has some fond memories of, like, working with the Smith and Robards, um, like, in their workshops and stuff when he was kind of, like, training and learning how to use Ghost Rock and stuff like that. But it's just, like, an it's an area that he, for whatever reason, just, like, can't really focus his mind on. All right. I mean, that makes sense. You spend a lot of time working around Ghost Rock. It's bound to do something to you. Uh, right. well, thank you all very much for sharing that information with us, uh, sharing your your names, your ickle descriptions, and uh, that little bit about home. I very much appreciate that. And uh, for those of you who just joined us, welcome. Welcome, all you mysterious strangers. We're just getting started, so come on in, pull up a seat by the fire, and let us spin you yarn. And uh, yes. if this is your first time here at Saving Throw, uh, know that we are an independent yarn spinner. Uh, and we don't buy our yarn from any big box stores or uh, have our yarn custom made for us by the finest yarn makers in Italy. No, <laughs> we make our, and this is too clumsy of a metaphor. We're an independent <laughs> channel. And like uh, one of the major ways that we are able to continue is uh, due to the support of our audience. So if you are enjoying the show, if you're having a good time, if you want to help support us, support all the efforts that we do here at Saving Throw to bring new and innovative and, and all kinds of great content to you on a weekly basis. If not uh, bi-weekly, which one means twice a week and which one means I think bi-weekly week? can, can mean both twice <gasps> yeah, a week just, and That's every just other week. bad wordage. Yeah, it's Anyways, not. But if you would annual, like, same thing. Yeah, that's ridiculous. terrible. If you would like to support us, please do consider tipping during the show. It means a lot to us. We are deeply appreciative of it. It helps us keep our operation running, helps us pay rent on the physical space that we will eventually be able to move back to uh, once, you know, nobody's sick anymore and everyone's healthy forever. And uh, also, as a fun side effect, all cash tips and bit cheers over 100 bits go towards unlocking reward tiers, which can have sometimes small, sometimes large, sometimes very, very <laughs> consequential effects on tonight's game or the campaign as a whole. To see what those are tonight, you can enter exclamation mark unlocks in the chat and follow the link. If you want the tip link, you can enter exclamation mark tips in the chat and follow the link. And even if you don't want to tip or you can't tip or for whatever reason, uh, we, we, we don't care. We're very happy to have you here all the same. Thank you very much for being here and and please do if you would like to support us in other ways consider spreading the word about the show to friends of yours who might enjoy it you can use the hashtag wildcardsrpg on the social media network of your choice uh in order to get the word out we would appreciate it let's bring more mysterious strangers in we need to be stared at by more mysterious people that we don't know from the shadows that's how this works um also also if you sub resub or gift a sub tonight during the show you can assign a curious ticket to either myself, the ringmaster, or to the table for any of the players to use at their leisure. These function as limited rerolls and go a very, very long way towards helping to ensure the success and continued survival of our intrepid performers. Also, have you ever heard of Hero Forge? No. Heroforge.com, the oh. website. Uh, Hero Forge is a place where you can go and design your very own fully 3D visualized, customized miniature for your own tabletop games in pretty much any genre you can imagine. There's one. Uh, but here's the thing, JCC. One. I yes. think if I got a mini, I, I'm not very good at painting minis, so like I wouldn't oh. be able to use it well. Well, have I got fantastic news for uh -huh. you, JP. You'll take a look at that uh, miniature that Megan's holding up there. She didn't paint that. In fact, that was made using Hero Forge's new colored options uh, that you can make. You can assign your very own custom palette of colors. Or look, oh my gosh, <gasps> is that Buzz Callahan we it see? Is. Wow, we. 
I am, buzz. I am very excited. I actually nice. just ordered a Nightlinger miniature, and uh, he looked awesome on the visualizer. So I'm very, very excited to see what I he looks like in person. Celestina. So yeah, I'm we got some fun stuff coming. So if you don't like sitting down to paint miniatures, but you still want a fully colorized 3D miniature of your character, you can do all of that and more on Hero Forge's website. Check them out at heroforge.com. They are a partner here of, of the show, and uh, we like the stuff that they do. Hopefully you will too. Give them, give them a look. Let's send out some bennies, everybody. Okay. What say right. you? I say bennies. yes. Bennies are a very important uh, currency in Savage Worlds. They're essentially the blood that makes the machine run. And each of you, since you have no hindrances or edges that affect your bennies up or down in either direction, you start with three. So let's hand them out. That's three to Celestina Moldovanu. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's three to Midas Buchanan. Oh, awesome. They turn into bottle caps when you give them to me. Oh, great. The internet's awesome. Uh, no, that's great. Three to Victor Parrish. Blah. Oh, thank you. And uh, oh, they turn into a cat. And Buster. The cat barfed them up. You get three as well. There you go. My double fist. Oh, good. Okay. Down. And since I am uh, your, your, your kind and, and, and ever, ever, um, I don't know, ever something ringmaster. I get that's one good. Benny for each of you. So that's one, two, three, four for me to use here. You ever say one for the Ichiya? One for the Ichiya. I have said that. I believe I've yeah. said that multiple times over the I think years. that's what he always yes. says. Is it what I always say? Yeah. I don't, I don't know about that. Something else Never heard him say that. Oh boy, do we have some have. things to hand out. Let's dive into this. So folks, it looks like we have already got a few toasts coming in. Uh, we will raise our glasses and toast to whatever you'd like for a tip of $15 or more. So you can handle that if you would like, but there's also gold toasts that you can use with the free currency you earn just by hanging out in our channel. And uh, we will do those here at the beginning of the show. We will do some more when we come back from our mid-show break. And if there's any remaining, we'll do them at the end. So let's knock some toasts out. Let's get also, nice and toasty. All toasts must rhyme. That is a rule. No, that's not a rule. Uh, don't feel like all toasts must rhyme. Says, says the guy who hates rhyming. How dare you, Megan? <laughs> but if you want your toast to rhyme, I mean, power to you. Uh, it's rhyme time. Let's raise our glasses okay. of, and our beverage of choice. Jack of Diamonds would like us to toast. Happy Leaf Erickson Day. And around halfway through the episode, my birthday. Oh. Celebrate hey. early with some wild cards. May your rolls always ace this session. <laughs> Set them up and knock them down. Thank you very much, Jack of Diamonds. Happy and birthday. also, happy early birthday. It's not his birthday yet. It's not their birthday yet. It's not halfway early through the episode. Birthday. Maybe, we'll, maybe we'll try and remember that for the break. Vampire54 <laughs> would like us to toast. The posse fell down a burning ring of fire, but they did not start the fire. But be no. careful or you'll burn. Set them up and <laughs> knock them down. Oh man, a lot of fire songs going through there. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much, Vampire54. Toa47 would like us to toast. Darkness comes with a road of self-sacrifice. A doll of two with hearts open to a man. A gunman's devotion comes to light. Will the Raven Queen sing tonight? Very nice. cryptic. Set them mm -hmm. up and knock them down. Thank you very Toast. much, Toa 47. I toasted with a cat. I feel like there's a riddle I need to solve here. Sergeant mm -hmm. <laughs> Awesome would like us to toast to the greatest show. That's the whole toast. Okay. <laughs> and yep. knock them down. Thank you very much, Sergeant Awesome. I don't know about the greatest show. I hear good things about that P.T. Barnum uh, fella. Lady <laughs> Amago. I don't hear good things about it. I don't either, actually. Yeah, it's not good bad things. Uh, Lady Amago would like us to toast. Here's hoping everyone makes it out alive. Yeah. <laughs> With a I'll period at that. the end of the sentence. Set them up and knock them down. Thank you, Lady Amago. Neva and Omar would like us to toast. Maybe it's a happy hunting ground. Mm -hmm. Oh. And knock them down. Thank you very much, Neva and Omar. That's a lovely thought, but <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Yay. E.T. Serket would like us to toast. In Romania, we have an old saying. If the train isn't going where you want, just make it cease to exist. And maybe that doesn't translate well. No rock. <laughs> Set him up and knock him down. Thank you very much, E.T. Serket. <laughs> Ralph, Wig Ralph Wiggum would like us to toast. <gasps> You're in danger. <laughs> <laughs> Set him up and knock him down. Thank you very Best much for one. that. Very timely Simpsons reference, Ralph mm -hmm. Wiggum. Love it. 
and SF Giants 49er would like us to toast. Looking forward to seeing what the ringmaster does with the wild cards that escaped from the frying pan, smiley face. Uh, Set him up uh -huh. and knock him down. Thank you very much, uh -huh. SF Giants 49er. And oh boy, it must be the beginning of a new month, you all, because we got some curious tickets to hand out. So let's go to the ticket booth. Bing, bing, bing. All right, Cat Me Gordon would like to give one curious ticket to me, the ringmaster, thank you very much. But Desk, Thunder Cabbage, and Nightshade 88 would each like to give a curious ticket to the players. Oh, yeah. That's us. Thank you. That's us. Quiddy would like to give <gasps> four curious tickets <gasps> to me, the ringmaster. Oh, thank you very much for that, Quiddy. Thanks for your work. Oh, um, boy. <laughs> Also, Obo Lauren would like to give a curious ticket to me, the ringmaster. Thank you for mm. that. Nega Oryx would like to give <gasps> one curious ticket to the players. Oh, yes, thank you. Yay. Vampire 54 would like to give four curious tickets to the players. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> yes. Tanum Wraith, however, would like to give one curious ticket to me, the ringmaster. Thank you. Huh. Uh, the infamous King Cupcake would also like to give one curious ticket to me, the ringmaster. Thank yeah. you, thank you. But Derek Lee Ketchum, Session Zero Clothing, <laughs> Paladin Devil Dog 22. Each of them would like to give a curious ticket to the players. Yes! Yeah. It's like a tennis match going on here. D4 Dustin would like to give a curious <laughs> ticket to me, the ringmaster. Thank you for that. Zarfin, though, would like to give four curious tickets to the players. Yes! Yes, that's us. Chem 13 Frank, Freak would like to give one curious ticket to the players. <gasps> uh, Made by Force 24 would like to give a curious ticket to me, the ringmaster, thank you for that. But Smokebeard would like to give two curious tickets to the players. Yes. And then Dissonique, uh, oh, 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 uh, Dissonique, Sergeant Awesome, Kron the Mad, and Yanto Seven would each like to give a curious ticket to the players as well. Oh, yeah! Gina PDX would like to give one to me, the ringmaster. Thank you for that, Gina PDX. But Zombie Wolf 72 would like to give one to the players, but Phantos 80 would like to give four of them to me, the ringmaster. Thank you for that. What? But Monstrosity Jones would like to give two to the players, Thank and you. SF Giants 49er would like to give four curious tickets to the players. <gasps> oh, oh my boy. gosh, we're going to be able to turn this in for such a big plushie. Um, Puma <laughs> Man Redux would like to give one curious ticket to the players, but Ovo Cop would like to give a curious ticket to me, the ringmaster. Thank Yay. you for that. Holgath would like to give one to the players, but Gunslinge Randy, our dear friend, would like to give one to me, the ringmaster. Thank you very much, Gunslinger Randy. Randy. And Acrylic Stain would like to give one to the players. Wow, that is, that is quite a bit of curious tickets Ooh. up here at front. And I forgot to mention one thing. We still have our sub goal as well. If we get 25 <gasps> new Mysterious Strangers subbed to the channel tonight, that will unlock a Dom song. Dum, da, dum, dum, dum. <laughs> every time, why every you time. Me, dom, why do you call me dumb so much? Dom will, or what, is that what the captioner said? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it does say it that. Did. Dumb, <laughs> dumb, 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 dumb. The captions um, don't think very highly of Dom. <laughs> dom will learn a brand new cowboy song and play it for us on the stringed instrument of his choice, perhaps a tiny guitar, uh, next week if we are able to unlock that goal. So keep that in mind, folks. And it looks like we have also unlocked our first reward tier for the evening. Let's pass the hat, folks, because the mysterious strangers would like to tip their <gasps> entertainers. Yeah. That yeah. means you. each of you get an additional Benny. That's one for Celestina, one for Midas, we one for it. Victor, one for Buster, and Don't eat it. one for me, your ringmaster. Check it if it was real. Thank you yeah. very much for that, mysterious strangers. You know what? We've got one more toast to do before we launch in. Let's do it up. Let's raise that glass once more. Fractured Avatar 13 would like us to toast. I wandered the void despite my best intentions. I found that the void had its own intentions. I fill the void with lost, with people by my side, faces I recognize, but whose souls I do not know. <sighs> Set them up and knock them down. You guys are poets tonight. All kinds mm -hmm. of different. You, you took Garab's rhyming challenge and we're like, no, we can do <laughs> prose poetry. <laughs> it doesn't rhyme, so like. It doesn't have to. Not everything has to rhyme all the time. <gasps> Damn it. Um, <laughs> before we go any further, 
everyone out there in internet land, I would like to warn you that Wild Cards is rated R slash TVMA slash the Canadian equivalent, wherever you are, for strong language, for violence, and for horror, especially horrific content, often disturbing content that comes along with the horror genre. We do make every effort to keep things classy, but these are the this, these are the plains of the weird west and we are in savage worlds. So things <laughs> do have a tendency to go horrifically awry sometimes. But having been duly warned, should you choose to ride with us, we welcome you. And that having been said, folks, I think it's time we settled up. Last time on Wild Cards, our intrepid carnival folk found themselves waking up on a train going somewhere with no real memory of how they got here. As they began to investigate and explore, they found that for each of them, there was a very compelling uh, a reason to remain on the train, uh, seemingly pulled from their own minds. And that ended up being exactly the case as the train was revealed not to be a train at all, but some sort of massive beast that had eaten them and was slowly digesting them, trying to keep them in place long enough, along with many of the other passengers that they saw on the train. However, a giant hole was blown in the bottom of this beast, breaking the illusion and giving them a chance to escape down on the shimmering paths of the hunting grounds where Nightlinger's traveling carnival of the extraordinary was going on a jaunt from one place to another in order to escape the observations of the triune of territorial rangers that were dogging them and Nouveau depart trying desperately to run after their compatriots and flee through a shimmering portal that would take them back out of this horrible, vast, empty void. It's fine. Our performers saw sadly that they had no hope of keeping up with the fleeing carnival and using his adventure card out of the frying pan, Buzz Callahan, instead destroyed the path beneath their feet, cutting off the avenue of pursuit for the carnival wagons, ensuring that they would make it through their portal, but plunging the four of our heroes down, down into the dark depths of the hunting grounds. And that <laughs> is where we pick up tonight. You all awaken in pitch blackness. And when I say pitch blackness, I mean pitch blackness. This is a darkness so deep that your senses can barely comprehend it. Feeling bruised and battered and finding yourself on some sort of muddy, squelching surface you hear the sound of horrible lightning strikes arcing through the night sky, followed by thunder. And for periodic moments, those flashes of lightning as they fork their way across the blackness illuminate things just barely around you. But something looks strange where the sky should be lighting up revealing clouds or stars or something instead the lightning arcs across a vast empty black void above you with no sense of texture or depth or distance whatsoever and even in the flashes of illumination the lightning affords your surroundings are very very dim but you can make out right near each other, it appears you have all fallen somewhat together. And as you come back to consciousness in the periodically illuminated darkness, what do you do? Oh. Hey. Okay, let's not panic, right? Uh, there's got to be some way out of here without night linger. Wait, wait, where is even here? Uh, why, well, why ain't we dead? Uh, Where's the train we even came from? Maybe we are dead. I mean, anything possible. 
<laughs> As you all are speaking to each other in the darkness, you can hear the voices of your companions, but they sound muffled and distorted in some way, even though in the flashes you see their distinct outlines for mere moments. Still, the sound travels strangely. Is there any information I might know about traveling through the hunting grounds? Um, I don't imagine, Celestina, that you have been on all that many jaunts. Buster, as someone who has been with the carnival the longest, you have probably been on the most, but at most, you've probably done this three or four times. And most of the times that you've done it, if not all of them, it has been just like you saw at the very end of our last session, traveling over shimmering bridges of, of suspended road in a shimmering abyss dotted with endless stars. This feels very different. The rest of you have maybe been on one or two jaunts since your time with the carnival, uh, not counting this most recent one. And this too seems very unfamiliar to you. However, Celestina, I will allow you to make an occult roll if you would like. Okay, I will. I aced it. You aced it. I did. I got a 10. A 10. A 10 is a success with a raise. So Celestina, you know from the things that you have learned firsthand, bits of conversation you've overheard around the carnival, and also some of your own exploration, that the hunting ground is vast and unknowable in its full extent. Most of the time, it is or can be relatively safe to traverse if you stick to the paths. However, off of a path, out here in the void, you have no idea where you could possibly be. But since you did get a raise, you can tell right away, Celestina, you feel a surge of power through you. Wherever you are, the dark powers that you command are responding in kind Ooh. to the energies of your environment. This is a very twisted place. Well, I think I have good news and I have bad news. Bad news is hunting grounds can be okay as long as you don't go off path, which we did. <laughs> But I feel very powerful here, so that's good, yes? Listen, I'm trying to raise spirit, so at least act like you're a little relief. Right, no, yeah. I just, I, hey, I, um, uh, I appreciate it, uh, princess. I, 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 I guess that it's better than, than if you felt really weak here. Um, uh, the we, ground moves somewhat uh, softly, squishily underneath you. It, it feels solid enough, but like some sort of gross sticking mud and it stinks something awful down here. Still, in the midst of all of this, apart from the periodic strikes of lightning, it is pitch, pitch black. Uh, I'm gonna find a wall, some cover or something. I'm just gonna start walking in a direction with my arm kind of out, looking uh, for a wall. Can, um, can I use elemental manipulation to light a fire of some kind so we have some light? Uh, you could summon a fire into uh, the palm of your hand if you would yeah. like with elemental manipulation. So, too. Victor, uh, you, yes, Midas, go ahead. I was gonna say, I'll just flip my glasses down too and see if it makes any difference. Okay, you're gonna flip down your ally lenses. Uh, Buzz, mm -hmm. anything that you're doing? I, I mean, when it when the lightning flashes, do we see anything beyond a little a little bit in front of us, or does does not light up the landscape or anything? Good question. Um, so if you are waiting for a lightning flash, let's let's get all of these things out here. So, um, Victor, uh, you are walking forward with your arms out, trying to to find something. Um, I will have you make a notice roll for me um, at a minus three. 
Okay. We'll say um, that is going to be uh, ameliorated somewhat by you kind of searching around with your arms. Uh, Buster, you are waiting for a lightning strike to see what it is that you can see around you. That is going to be a notice roll at a minus one. The difficulty here comes from the timing of it. Uh, Celestina, you're just making your elemental manipulation roll. Actually, if you wait until she lights her fire, I guess all of this, all of these penalties are going to be uh, way lower. And then Midas, you're flipping down your lenses, yes? Yeah. Okay, so let's, do, did you want to wait until she lights her fire, Victor and Buzz? No. Okay. I, I already rolled, so I, I technically Fantastic. wouldn't be fair. All right, it's all happening all at once then. <laughs> um, Celestina, what mm -hmm. is your elemental manipulation roll? <laughs> oh no! Wow. Celestina. Wow. <laughs> you to use that new emote, chat. <laughs> oh no! Celestina. Yeah. Did you critically fail a I spell did. casting I roll? Did. Oh no. I did. Oh, In the no. hunting ground. Someone was going to have to be the first person to do it. Yeah, well, it's extra bad for Ooh. me. Ooh. Well, this yeah. is going to get interesting. So, um, Midas. You flip down your owl eye lenses, expecting everything to be lit up in sharp black and white relief, like it always is in the darkness. However, even with your lenses down, things still seem dim and murky here. You are going to reduce the penalty from a minus six for pitch darkness to a minus two for dim illumination, but that is the best that your owl eye lenses are able to afford you in this place. So give me a notice roll at a minus two. And then while you do that, Victor and Buzz, what did you roll? I rolled a 16. A 16? Jeez. Buzz, I just got a that seven. <laughs> is a success with several raises, so well done. And Victor, you got a seven, which is success just shy of one raise. So, um, Buzz, as you are sitting there in the murk, listening to your uh, companion shout over the sounds of the howling wind and the thunder and the lightning, you just wait for the strike of lightning, uh, letting a couple of them come to help ease the transition from light to darkness for your eyes, letting your eyes begin to settle. And then as another one comes, you open them and stare intently around you. You are able to see that all of you appear to be in a large, muddy hole in the ground. Uh, it's very, very big, maybe 50 feet across, but it's not super deep, maybe about uh, 10 to 15 feet down below. It, it looks like it was either dug by hand or it collapsed. It's hard to tell and you can feel the, the, the movement of the mud around you. Um, I'll get right back to you, Buzz, because you do yeah. notice one other thing, okay. Victor. Uh, you walk forward and start feeling around with your hands, and you have a hard time keeping your boots from being sucked off your feet in this <clears throat> mud or whatever it is that you're walking through, but eventually you do find the soft, wet, crumbling earth uh, in front of your hands, and feeling out to either side, you realize it sort of expands out around you in at least in uh, a semicircle in front of you, if not a ring all the way around you. Uh, Midas, what was your roll? I just got a three. A three, which is a failure, Midas. As you flip down your lenses and try to peer out, a sudden flash of lightning streaks <sighs> through the skies, brightening it up immediately just where you happen to be looking, and your eyes are dazzled by the light being refracted through your lenses, momentarily making it very difficult for you to make out anything at all. Buster. As you see Victor moving forward shakily and trying to feel his way around the wall, you see him step forward through the mud and you watch a hand come up out of the ground attached to his boot that he just sort of kicks off thinking it's a branch or something and it falls flopping to the side. As you look around, Buster, with your 16 in another flash of lightning, now that you know what you're looking for, you see crooks of elbows, rotting feet, thighs, torsos, arms, dead, decaying, moldering, liquefying faces. And suddenly it becomes clear that you are not in a pit filled with mud, but instead a pit filled with the liquefying remains of people. Can I get a spirit roll from you, Buster, at a minus three? And just Buster, since just Buster has seen this. 
success. Out of minus Buster. three? Minus three. That's a four. A four is a hey. success. Buster, as you realize that and the sudden revelation of what this horrible cloying smell is washes over you, you feel yourself go cold and clammy and your gorge begin to rise and it's all you can do to not flee screaming from this place, emptying your lunch out as you go, just trying to get the images out of your head. But instead, you lift your eyes up above the level of the ground and take deep breaths until you are able to soothe your churning stomach. As all of this is happening, Celestina, you reach out a hand and try and pull the energies, the dark energies from within you out to summon a flame. But as you do, you feel a sudden rush up from the ground beneath your feet. A tidal wave of dark energy goes surging through you and you feel your body spasm and shake as you double over, not in pain, Celestina. It's uncomfortable, sure, and it's sudden, but something about this also feels somewhat pleasurable. Celestina, as a witch, you have critically failed your spell casting role. Will you please indicate on your character sheet that you have gained one point of corruption yeah. Now, so we don't make you go digging through the Savage Worlds book right now, since when you gain a point of corruption, corruption, you gain a new minor hindrance or upgrade a minor hindrance to a major hindrance. Oh, I can plant this in your brain like a rotten egg waiting to hatch until our next session. Or if you had an idea in mind of how Celestina would be corrupted by this, you can tell us what hindrance you'd like to take now. Uh, but this I will remain permanently until yeah. you are able to get rid of it in one of two ways, one of which is spending an advance to buy it off, the other we'll deal with later. Uh, I left my book back there with you, so I don't have one right now. Celestina, the sensation is almost enjoyable, and as it slowly ebbs away from your body, you feel changed in some way, but not altogether in a bad way. There is a pale, light off white green egg, a spiritual egg waiting and pulsing in your brain, Celestina. And next session, it will hatch into a most beautiful bout of corruption. But for now, oh. that is what happens. You, you also get fatigue for failing a, for crit failing a spell casting role, right? Um, I don't know if witches do or not. Uh, while I look that up, what do you all want to do? Uh, my hand does not seem to want light on fire right now, so... <laughs> okay, everyone, just stop what you're doing and come to me and just grab a hold of me, okay? Uh, 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 okay. Okay, what did you see about? What, what is it? Just don't look around, all right? This is, just uh, promise me you're not going to try to look at anything. We're just going to get out of this, okay? And everything is going to be fine. Everything's going to be okay. You just have to hold on to me. I will get us out of this, all right? Okay, oh, okay. Okay. Uh, you, um, when we fell, JCC, uh, Christopher fell with us, right? Correct. Christopher is down here as well. He's right near you, although he seems to have powered down. He's not making any movement whatsoever. And then fluttering over your left shoulder, you hear Vika's wings, Celestina. She is here as well, and JP was correct. You do take a point of fatigue uh, from, from your uh, backlash as well. As Buster says that to all of you, reaching out, telling you to, to take one another's hands and to not look around in the flash of lightning you see his pale and drawn face and something about the look in his eyes lets you know just how serious he is okay all right, oh, but, all right. we trust you what's your plan buster just uh, i see a way out of this we're just gonna have to do a little bit of climbing but we'll we'll, we'll get out of this okay just stick with me okay okay um, it's so dark in here. I, I I can't even see anything with my glasses on. Yeah, yeah. I I imagine uh, 
a lot of these things. And I'm just going to start walking forward and make sure that everyone's got a got a hold on me. And, okay. Uh, um, so is every everyone's basically got a hand on on Buster then essentially as you're making your way through the dark. Uh, yeah. Yeah. One hand on Buster and one hand holding Christopher's hand. Well, actually, at this point, you're kind of holding Christopher's hands and also dragging his uh, his form along with you. He seems inert right yep, now. Yep, seems fine. Um, Buster, it is another thing entirely to walk through this material knowing now what you know about it. Every bump and nudge and yeah. solid thing you hit with the toe of your boots, images flash unbidden into your mind and still you keep up your measured breathing, trying to keep from losing yourself in disgust. But you all slowly make your way over to the earthen wall, um, just near where Victor had explored earlier. Um, and reaching out, you feel the wet, crumbling mud of earth in front of you. All right. Oh. Uh, we're going to have to climb over this mound right here and that'll get us out of the hole we're in all right okay uh yeah uh victor why don't you go first and uh need someone else up there that can uh help pull people up all right i'm on it uh, i can uh try to fly up there and uh be le one less person to be a bait and be more helpful, yes? It, it is not all that high up there. It's about 10 oh, okay. or 15 feet above you. So um, especially in light of what just happened to you and the sudden weakness that goes flooding through your body, Celestina, yeah. that doesn't seem like the best use of your abilities currently. Although I won't stop you if that's what you want to do. <laughs> okay. No, I won't. <laughs> so, Victor, you're going to try and go up first? Yes. Okay, uh, so can you, get, can you give me an athletics roll at a minus one? Though the earth is wet and crumbling, still it, it feels fairly sticky, almost like clay, and you find yourself able to get handholds in it. And if you're careful, it's only a little bit tricky to climb up the side. Okay. Uh, ooh, that is, uh, you said a minus one, right? Yes. Okay, uh, I'm gonna use a Benny to re -roll. A Benny for Victor Parrish. Oh, I aced that one. Yay. Uh, duh, it's a seven. Seven. All right. That is a success. So, Victor, um, you are able to just shove your hand into the wetness until you find enough firmness in the earth for your hand holds and your feet to make purchase as you climb your way up out of the edge of the pit. And as you do that, a flash of lightning once again illuminates your surroundings, and Victor, everywhere, as far as your eyes can see in every direction, you see headstones and crypts and other markers like you are in the most enormous cemetery you have ever seen in your life. Uh, this is above where I got to, right? This is above the hole you were all in. I'm just, I'm not going to mention that. Uh, but I am going to lean over the edge and hit, offer my hand. Okay. All right. So you lean over the edge and reach down. Who's going up next? Come on. I'll, I got you. I'll reach up. Okay. Uh, so Celestina, this is going to be an athletics roll at a minus one. Um, but Victor, you get to support this essentially. Can, can uh, I, so can Victor, I help with a push? Oh, you're going to help from below as well? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so Victor and Buzz, that's going to be a strength roll from each of you to help assist Celestina here. Okay. Way to not help push Victor up to there, Buzz. <laughs> <laughs> he made it. Uh, no, no penalty for us, or do we get the same penalty? No penalty for you guys. Okay. okay. Uh, so four. I got a four plus one. Or... Okay, you both got a four, so that is a mm. plus one from each of you. So Celestina, your athletics roll is at a net total of plus one. Uh, it's actually at zero because I have fatigue. Right, so. you have fatigue. Thank yes, you. <laughs> it's at zero. I got a three. Could I have a reroll, please? You may <laughs> indeed. A curious ticket is spent. Reroll is earned. That's much better. I aced it. Okay, uh, nine. 
Nine. Oh, that's a success with a raise. So with uh, Buster lifting, giving you a boost from underneath and Victor reaching down to grab your hand in one fluid motion, Celestina, you rise up out of the hole and step out onto the firm ground around you. And you too, in the sudden illumination of lightning. It is flickering pretty constantly almost, although not completely constantly. You too see graves and crypts and markers all around you in every direction. Who is next? Is is this Fine, toy man, I got you. Okay. Uh, I, 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 I'm following the sound of your voice. Uh, Do you still so, have your lenses down? Yes. Uh, so you can actually still see in, in a little uh, bit. Although it's dim, it, it, everything looks sort of like twilight light to you, uh, Midas. It's not quite clear, but you have decent visibility. Okay. Um, I will also help. Uh, yeah. I get one hand, you get the other, Victor. Uh, you're all, all right. going to help. All right. Uh, so that's strength rolls from everyone except for Midas. Everybody knows Midas is not strong enough to lift his own body weight out of a pit. <laughs> well, you are also <laughs> trying to bring Christopher up, too. You are one-handed in many ways. That's true. I got a three. <laughs> a three is not going to be enough, Celestina. I got a ten. A ten is a there success with a raise. That's a pretty two. good. A two. Well, it's a good thing <laughs> that Victor uh, was ex as successful as he was. Um, Buzz, as you go up behind Midas and try and boost him up, uh, his feet just scrabble and slip off of your hands, slick as they are with the juices of the liquefying bodies down here in the pit. And it, you yeah. cannot continue to help him. The disgust overwhelms you and you have to step back. Celestina, uh, as that happens, a sudden burst of noxious air comes up from the pit below, oh. sending you back reeling as well. Only Victor <laughs> remains, reaching out a strong hand and grasping Midas's arm firmly just as he began to fell backwards and hauling him up, hopefully. Midas, you are rolling at a net plus one now. Okay. Oh, I aced on the D4. Um, so that's a six total. With Victor's assistance, even uh, bound down by the motionless Christopher, you're able to pull yourself up out of the hole. You <laughs> too Come on, now toy can man. see the gravestones all around you, My uh, Midas. Welcome to the graveyard, I guess. <laughs> yeah. All right, Buzz. Come on. All right. Okay, uh, who is helping Buster? I'll help. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, keep, I'll, I'll continue. All right, uh, Celestina and Victor, give me strength rolls. Midas gets distracted and doesn't help. Sure, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of graves. <laughs> 15. 15. Uh, I got a seven. All right, uh, a seven. <laughs> I so that is, success. Uh, that is a success. With, that is a total of plus three to your roll, Buster. So you're rolling at a plus two altogether. Uh, plus two altogether, then yes. that's a seven. Uh, a seven, all right. That is a success. With Celestina and Victor's help, uh, you grab both of their arms and sort of kick and walk your way up the wall until you are over the edge and you can see the gravestones as well. However, as that is happening, as you are scrambling over the edge of it, Buster, you hear a whispering sound come up from the hole beneath you. It sounds like a sudden chorus of voices all speaking softly all at once. And at first it sounds like just a confusing, a confusing muddle of sound, but eventually they all sort of start to line up until you can all hear the whispers growing louder. Here, they're here, they are here. And as that begins to happen, lightning arcs across the sky and lingers for a moment, lighting up your surroundings. Can I get a notice roll from everyone? No penalty, Midas, you get a plus one because of your lenses. Uh, I got I, a five. Can I get a curious ticket, please? Curious ticket for Buster. Four. Four for Celestina. I got a nine. Nine, success with a raise for Victor. Uh, 17. 17, a success with several raises. Might be good, might be bad. Yeah, but I know, this is, hasn't been good the last time. <laughs> Sometimes it, it's not so great yeah. to see what is going on around you. And mm. it turns out that this is one of those times. Ooh. Oh, boy. As that chorus of whispers grows to an almost hoarse shout announcing your location, uh, Midas, Celestina and Victor, in the distance, in the light from the tempest, you see movement, dark 
and shadowy, leaping from gravestone to gravestone, staying low and down towards the ground, behind them, out of sight, but clearly moving towards you. Buster, you got a success with several raises. You catch a glimpse of humanoid figures on all fours, loping and bounding from shadow to shadow, looking ethereal and transparent, but for their faces, which you can tell are solid, but mercifully, you are too far away to get a very good look, but it is becoming clear that you are not alone in this place. And now you all know, what do you do? Uh, uh, I'm going to start loading my shotgun again and say we we have to move now. Where do we move? I you... I don't know behind a crypt or something. We we we've got to get out of here. We this is probably mortal people like us are. I don't think we're supposed to be here. <laughs> Still, <laughs> does does anyone see anything in any direction that we could go to? Uh, Those dark shapes continue to flit and move, and you can see now that they seem to be moving in a direct line towards your location and the continued whispering shouts of the pit of liquefied bodies behind you. But is there any way if I could tell that, I mean, it seems like they can tell where we are, as in they can see in the dark or they can smell us or something like that. Is that true? You have no way of knowing from this distance, Celestina, but your best guess is probably the shouts of they're here coming from behind you okay. is what is driving I them. have idea. I could try to make illusion of us here so we could get away and maybe lead them off. As, as long as we're getting away from here, that sounds fine. That sounds good to me. Wait, okay. Well, does that mean you can make us like, like they can't see us? Uh, well, I can't make us invisible, but I could maybe duplicate a sort of sense of us. Oh my God. A high, keening shriek <laughs> pierces. They the didn't hear that. I did. And it I freaked heard me it. out. I heard, I heard it from Megan's. Megan's. I heard it from Megan's mic. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what is happening? Sorry, uh, sorry. You sorry. hear this ear splitting sound cut through the darkness and answering cries from out in the graves. I can light the sky if we want it, but then they're definitely going to see us, but it seems like yeah. they can see us no matter what. I think right. we just need to move. I think we need to get away from this pit that's yelling, that's telling them where we are. Yeah. Okay. Closer All right. and closer. Uh, uh, I'm going to use ammo whammy to uh, shoot a flare. Okay. Uh, and what is everyone else doing? Could I, could I try to use fear to see if I can scare them, some of them off at least. Sure. Midas, Buzz? Um, you you said there were crypts and stuff around here, right? Oh, there's all manner. Think of anything you have ever seen in a graveyard. It is yeah. all piled shoulder to shoulder in this place. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, okay, whatever you wanna try and do, but we have to move from this spot. So- Agreed. I think yes. we need to get out to uh, one of these Rips or something, get behind them, move away from this pit because All they're right. coming here. Let's let's go. I think Midas is gonna take off in the direction of one of the um the mausoleums or crypts. Or okay. Whatever. So Midas, you're gonna take off towards the nearest mausoleum or crypt, something that looks like it's large enough for you to duck down behind and hide. Buster, or is that your plan as well? That's my plan, but I I I'm loyal. I don't want to leave them behind necessarily, so I, I I want to come off to the side and just be like, it's now or never. We we, we gotta go. I'm gonna I'll... follow wherever anybody goes and just cast fear behind us. I'm I'm gonna light the sky. We look for some place to run and we go. We go we go that way. Okay, but if you light the sky, there's just as much chance that they'll see us that. Even well, better. I'm pretty sure I'll... they can see us just fine right now. Again, that screeching noise comes. You have moments, whatever you're doing. I'll try to scare them off. So you light sky, I scare. We run, yes? Yeah. Buzz, Midas, pick direction and place. Yeah, we so I'll just follow Midas and just go this way. So the order is light up the sky, drop fear. Everyone flees towards a mausoleum. Mm -hmm. All together, yes? Yep. Yes. Sure. Okay. 
before we get into the sequence of events, we have unlocked, thanks to the mysterious strangers in chat, a draw! <gasps> draw, draw, draw! And now seems like a particularly draw. pertinent time to see. Oh, this die likes Buster uh -oh. Callahan. Buzz, you are our recipient tonight. Get the Let same card. You like Get the same card. Yeah, right? Do yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. We just keep getting deeper. <laughs> we inception our way into the fire. Rally. The center of the earth. Oh, that's All a good one. Allies within five squares discard their shaken, stunned, distracted, oh. or vulnerable status. Ooh. Okay. That that's is a pretty nice. good one to have there. We have also unlocked the next reward tier, oh. uh, which I will not name right now. We oh, will that on. later when we deal with it. Uh, but thank you very much, Mysterious Strangers in chat. That's going to be very helpful. Okay. All right, and since we're stopped, four curious tickets from Shimixon to me, the ringmaster. <laughs> thank you very much. Thanks, Shimixon. And Wolf yeah. 5 and Victor Von Doom 2099 yeah, would each love to gift a curious ticket to the player. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. So light up the sky with ammo whammy, drop fear to scare them off, and flee stealthily, I assume, towards the nearest mausoleum. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yes. Victor, ammo whammy. Here it comes. Booyah! Whammy they, them with ammo. That's an ace. Uh, so that's an 11, so I get uh, a raise with it. So I will use a uh, flare as my first one. Uh, I guess I choose, I'm only shooting it once, so I'm just gonna shoot it with flare up in the air for right now. Okay. All right, so Victor, you pull your gun out of your holster, spinning it as you do, and one of the runes engraved on it lights up as you fire off a shot into the night sky. It explodes like a firework, showering light over the area. Uh, how does flare work and how long does it last? Uh, flare, uh, shot into the night sky, removes illumination penalties in the immediate area for one minute. One minute? Oh, wow, that's lots of time. Great. It's a long time. All right, so that blasts into the air above you and illuminates the things that are creeping towards you from grave to grave. Uh, Celestina, I'm going to let you drop your fear before you react to this fear. Uh -oh. <laughs> you had already been planning to do that, but fear off. go ahead. Okay. Uh, well, that's a four. That is a success. Yeah, yeah. You did minus your fatigue, right? Yeah, I did. I rolled a five on my okay. invisible five. dice. It's a five. Nice. So uh, they roll what against that? They roll, I believe it is spirit. Sorry, I always forget. Forget. Yep. They just make a fear roll. Spirit. All right, I will spend a curious ticket to reroll that. That is one success. I will spend a curious ticket to reroll that. That is two successes. Uh oh. And that is a third success. There's only three of them. We did it. Celestina, you drop a spell at that moment. You feel the dark energy sur surging up through you and it comes out as a giant, well, not giant, a huge, uh, vague humanoid shadowy form that drops its face open and screeches out into the night. And its screech is met in kind by a trio of screeches as these dark creatures down on all fours come springing up landing on top of gravestones and markers near you. You see their shadowy bodies and their solid fleshy faces, the faces of incredibly aged human men with their eyes black and empty and their hair running down stringy on the side as they open their rotten mouths and screech out as well. You see them in the light, look up, into the suddenly illuminated sky, and then right over at the four of you. Can I get those stealth rolls from uh, Buster and Midas and Victor and Celestina? Mm. Oh boy. Uh, but they see you, so these will be opposed. Good Hooray. thing stealth is a core skill, so I have Can I, it. <laughs> Can I get a curious ticket, please? A curious ticket to re-roll for Buster. 
I'm going to use a bend. You say at a minus? There was a minus? Uh, no minus on, no minus on this. It's just going to be opposed. Victor a spends 10. a Benny to re-roll. Right. I am also using a Benny to re-roll. A Benny to re-roll for Buster. I'd like a curious ticket. A curious ticket for Victor. You might not want to use too many resources on this, guys. Okay, I'll just fail it. Well, I'm just saying, I crit failed mine, so. Oh, why well, you didn't no. do yeah, that? Group, we're but, not stealth in a way. That's what I'm saying. But you're the trouble also, magnet. You can keep them busy while we get out. Also, after you're done <laughs> rolling Literal stealth, yeah. I'm going to need a fear roll from each of you oh. at a minus five. Okay, oh. you know what? I'll take that one not being the crit fail. Well, don't, oh, don't, great. don't speak so soon. <laughs> May I get a curious ticket, please? A curious ticket for Buster. Uh, no penalty for that, right? Even for the fear roll? Yeah. Five. Minus, Minus five. five. Oh, five. Oh. Yeah. Which is kind of like no penalty. <laughs> I got an eight. An eight for Celestina. So that means yeah. you got a 13. Yeah. I um, had to subtract six. I got a four. I'm going to need a, a curious four for ticket. Buster. A curious ticket for Midas. I'm going to use a Benny. A Benny for Victor. One remaining, Victor. Yeah, I know. I can. Okay, I got a six. A six. Buster the fear. and Victor? I got a four. Four? Oh, sorry, I got a five. Does, yeah, five. 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 Buster, did we already get your fear roll? I got a four. A four. All right, you all succeed. Even though these things come leaping up onto the gravestones, now cast in horrifying light by the illumination in the sky, you manage to keep it together. Now, what were those stealth rolls? Crit fail for Midas. The rest of you got a four buster, an eight okay. Celestina, and a fail. No, I got a ten. Sorry, a ten I Celestina. A ten. Celestina and Buster. Oh wait, I did say these were going to be opposed. Hold on. Yeah, but you can forget <laughs> that part. Okay, you don't but have to. I didn't though. I'm going to spend a curious ticket to re-roll. I got an eight. Wow. Well. Celestina, mm -hmm. as soon as you drop your fear and catch sight of these creatures, you drop down panting behind the nearest gravestone and start creeping your way carefully over, but quickly towards a nearby mausoleum. Buster, you do the same, but just as you drop down, you see one of these things swivel its head over towards you, and in the empty sockets of its eyes, you see it latch, it latch onto you as you drop down and start moving as well. Victor, you just take off at a run, heading for some kind of cover, throwing caution to the wind, and Midas, you try to follow after everyone, ducking down, but your foot gets caught on something. You don't even see it in the chaos, and you go sprawling uh. forward, prone on the ground and helpless as your friends go running towards the nearest crypt. However, Buster, Victor, and most definitely Midas, you have all been spot. And actually, Midas, you have Trouble Magnet, don't you? I do, I have Trouble Magnet. You go falling prone, and your little wrist-mounted toy soldier pops off of your hand uh, due to oh. all of the slick, wet mud and skitters out away from you into the dark. It is around here somewhere, Midas. And these things see you, and these things screech. They all screech at once, all three of them perch stomp on the backs of these tombstones, and you swear, each of you that can see them, you see a giddy glee in their empty eyes. We are in a combat. Hell yeah. One moment while I pull up the right music. The right music. All right, so I'm going to deal you all in, Celestina, you are, uh, you have gone unobserved, essentially. So whatever you do, mm. you're going to uh, get, a, you're not gonna get the drop because they know you're around here somewhere, but you'll get a plus two to, uh, okay. to your trait rolls and damage rolls this turn. Uh, so first up, Celestina, a, what is that? A five of clubs. Five clubs. Midas, a jack of clubs. Right. Victor, a king of diamonds. Yes. Buster, a two of diamonds. And these creatures, a 10 of spades. Would anyone like to spend a Benny to redraw their card? No. No? All right. I, 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 I will spend one. You're gonna spend one, Celestina? Yeah. All right, trying to go before them. Not a five of clubs, but a queen of clubs. Okay. Well, spent Celestina. All right, 
So first up is going to be Victor, and then Celestina, then Midas, then the creatures, then Buster. Victor, you're up first. Okay, cool. Uh, I will take my full movement, I guess, away from them. So six uh, spaces. All right, you you just go backpedaling backwards, checking over your shoulder to make sure you're not about to go sprawling over a gravestone, but not wanting to let these things out of your sight as you move away from them, keeping your distance. What do you want to do? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually take two shots. Okay. Um, and I'm going to uh, since I got a raise and ammo whammy, I get two powers on each shot. Uh, I'm gonna give them both bullet with your name on it and um, loaded for bear, which increases the damage die. So load, bullet with your name on it uh, gives me a plus two to shooting, which negates the multi-action penalty. So it's basically two shots with increased damage. All right, sounds great. Um, but you do have to first cast those spells. Uh, oh, well, no, no, you already cast Ammo Whammy. You're yeah, assigning yeah. qualities. I see, gotcha. Yes, yes, right. yes, yeah. Okay, here we go. So you spin the chamber of your gun, and as the bullets light up inside, you squeeze off two shots. Okay, first one's a five, so a four, which hits. Uh, that will hit. Okay, should I roll damage first? Uh, sure, go for it, buddy. Okay, so the damage is now 2d8. Uh, that's an ace on a d8. Nice. Woo! Nice. That's another ace on a D8. Yeah. Whoa. Kill them all. So that's 19. That's just a one of the D8s. Okay. 19 plus four plus 23. one is 24 24. damage. Plus one for, for Grim Servant, 25. 25. So the bullet goes streaking out like a, a, a bright shot of light in the darkness, although not as dark now that the sky has been set aflame by your flare. And it flies directly into this thing's shadowy, ethereal body. Now, you might expect it to go flying out the other side without impacting it at all, and you would be very very wrong as the bullet hits it directly in the middle of its body it screeches and claws at its form as though trying to pull it out from within the inside of itself before with a final shriek its blackness expands until it explodes leaving nothing behind except two others that shriek in anger and look directly at you victor second shot oh yeah they can die second shot Uh, that's a four, just a regular old four. That's so that's nice. a hit. Cool, I'm gonna roll some damage. Uh, oh, that's crappy. Oh, that's really crappy. Uh, can I use a curious ticket? To reroll your damage, you may. Yes, please. Oh, uh, that's an ace on a D8. That's 13 so far. Man. Seven is, tw- so 22. 22. <laughs> 22, another shot comes streaking out of your gun, and it goes much the same way. These Both of these shots fly out before they have too much of a chance to react, and the other one blows up in a huge blast of warm, rotten-smelling air, leaving only one screeching forward at you. Pretty good round, Victor. Next up, Celestina. Okay, I would like to have Vika go first, and could she essentially try to distract this other one uh, to give me a support role? Uh, do you want her to support you, or do you want her to try and test the other one to make it distracted or vulnerable? Uh, I guess it would be better if it was vulnerable, right? No, okay. no. If I'm casting a spell, though, but it affects the toughness. So right. tests are opposed, and right. support rolls are not. Um, so you let's can... do support. Okay. All right. So how would you like Vika to support you? You want her to fly down and try and distract this thing in order to support your action? Yeah. That's okay. Kind of so I'm... I'm guessing athletics on Vika's part. I like it. All right. That's a six. Okay, that is a success. So Vika comes rocketing down at, out of the sky and swoops down, claws extended, and rakes them across the head of this thing. As it reaches up and slashes at her, it takes its eyes off you for just a moment. Vika gives you a plus one. Now, we're not very good about doing this, but what role is Vika supporting? You are supposed to announce what oh, you are Oh, spell casting. Spell casting. All right, so Vika so- is giving you a moment to get off a spell. As she does that, I want to just kind of raise up my hand 
and then uh, assuming it works, of course, uh, I want this like spiral to come off of my arm and shoot out a series of insect creatures to fire off a bolt. Okay. Uh, and I will spend an extra power point to make it a little more powerful. Okay. Okay, so let me get the right die. Okay, that is a, a five. Uh, That's a success. That's a success, yes. All right. Okay. And damage. Come on. Ooh, I aced it on one of them. Nice. 15. 15. 15 damage as these insects go flying out of your hand, taking advantage of the opening that Vika bought you. This solid mass of biting, swarming, stinging bugs flies directly into this thing and covers it, tearing at its form, tearing at its body, tearing it apart as the thing falls to the earth and dissolves into a fog on the ground. At first, you want to breathe a sigh of relief. But then you hear more screeches from all around you and you see off in the distance, completely surrounding you, more faces popping up from behind gravestones, all looking at the shining light in the sky over this area that has lit you all up like a beacon to the vast endless plain of graves filled with these creatures. You see at least four more getting closer as they start to lope, not bothering to hide themselves, leaping from the top of gravestone to gravestone, heading for where you are, and you hear the distant screeches of more. It sounds like and looks like this illumination is calling them to you. Buster. Good or sorry, no, uh, Midas. Uh, you like are up next. Lots. Me? Yes. Okay, so Midas is on the ground and he kind of like scrabbles around for a bit. He fell off, He fell down and he, he kind of saw the, the soldier skitter away but didn't exactly see where it went. So he's gonna try and kind of pull himself off the ground and uh, try and get to wherever the soldier uh, went off to. All right, so you stand up from prone, and will you give me a notice roll, please, Midas? Huh. Now, you still have your ally lenses in. Um, yes. However, you are not going to get any extra bonus to your notice roll now that there are no illumination penalties whatsoever, thanks to Flair. So just a straight notice roll. Okay. Um, if, if I don't need them at all, I'll just turn them off. All right, you flip your lenses up. Because I'd rather them not explode if I get a grip fail. Fair point. <laughs> Which might blind me. <laughs> Or worse. Uh, all right, I got a five. A five is a success. So looking around desperately for your toy soldier, you see it back at the very edge of the pit, teetering back and forth on the edge as though it's about to overbalance and fall in at any point. God, ah! And it's a little far away. You're gonna have to spend the entire rest of your movement getting over there towards it. Yep, Midas is gonna run to it kind of panicking, being like, oh, shit, shit, shit. Um, and just try and run over and grab the toy soldier before it goes in. You run over and scramble for it, reaching out to grab it. Can I get an athletics roll from you, Midas? Sure can. Favorite roll. Um, can I get a curious ticket? You can indeed. A curious ticket is spent. A re-roll is one. That's a four. A four well, one of them is- One was a one, and for a moment I was like, <laughs> A four is a success, but just barely. As you go scrambling over to the edge, you see your little Buchanan ball launcher overbalance and start to fall into the pit, but you slide down to your stomach and reach out and snatch it from <sighs> midair and grab it, clutching it tightly to yourself as the answering screeches of more of these creatures abound from around you. It is their turn. There are four more leaping towards you on the gravestones. However, they still are fairly distant. So I am going to have uh, each of them spend their move to come loping and leaping towards you. However, 
once they get close enough, uh, let's see. So you're over by the pit. Celestina uh, and Victor are standing kind or, or no, I'm sorry, Celestina. Did we give you your bonus for being hidden last time? Oh no. It didn't matter. You annihilated them. You would have annihilated them more. But now that you've revealed yourself standing up from uh, around these graves and Buster, you're still standing uh, in the middle of everything. Uh, you haven't yet gotten the chance to act. Uh, so, let's see. We'll go either Buster or Victor since you're the most open. Um, Victor. One of them, as it comes leaping closer towards you, it is not close enough to do anything to you yet, but it sneers at you and opens its mouth and chomps its teeth as though showing you what it is going to do to your throat and yeah. tries to test you with intimidation. Come get some. It is also menacing, so it's going to get a plus two to this roll. Uh, come, that's a, that's come an ace. Get some. Oh, come. That's a come. 12. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Will you resist with spirit, please? Okay. Um, uh, I mean, I didn't succeed. Uh, I mean, I got a five, but versus, I did not succeed. Uh, against that, that would be a success with a raise against you. Are you going to keep it, Victor? Wait, I thought they got a twelve. They did, and you got a five. Oh, right. Um, no, I'll use my last, no, well, I, I, no, I'm not gonna use my last Benny. Psh, it's fine. What happens? All right, uh, uh. you are both shaken and distracted by this as, as it shows you what it is going to do to your face and the soft, <laughs> vulnerable flesh of your neck as soon as it gets closer. You just kind of step back a bit. There is not a lot that can make ice water run in your veins, Victor, after what have you what you've seen, but it is happening now. You are shaken and distracted. And then also uh the same thing is going to happen from another one at you, Buster. Okay. Uh it gets a 7 leaping up near a gravestone uh that the uh, near the other one who is trying to currently distract Victor comes one more which shrieks loudly at you. Uh, can you resist with spirit? This is also intimidation. Yeah. Uh, that's at four, but I'm, uh, this is, a, this is uh, against, right? I need to beat them. Uh, you need to meet or beat them. Yeah, and they got a seven? They did. Um, okay, I'll use a curious ticket, please. A curious ticket. Uh, all right, I got a seven. A seven meets it, so as it shrieks at you, you just cover your, your ears uh, instinctually and block out the full force of the sound so that it is not able to shake you and rattle you in the way that was intended. As they get closer, they are now fanning out and snarling preparing to move in and finish you. Yes. Um, so I know I know my flare illuminated us so they could see us, but did it also illuminate possibly an exit of any sort? What it illuminated is a correct, a, a correct assumption on your part. Graves, as far as the eye can see in every direction. Cool. All right, that's their turn. Buster, you end the round. Um, so there... It, there is one next to me now? Not right next to you. Um, it is uh, going to be able to close with you next round, but you could move over to it. You wouldn't have to run to, to close ground with it, but it's it's getting closer. I'm going to move to Midas and basically take a protective stance over Midas because you're scrambling right now for your cannon, right? He just recovered it, yeah, but he's still in a bit of a vulnerable position. Okay, then I'm going to, I'm going to do that and just tell... Uh, Victor and Celestina to just start running and we'll be right behind him. Okay, so you're going to move into a defensive position in front of Midas yeah. and tell the others to start running, but that's yeah. all you're doing? Um, are they close enough for me to shoot him? They are definitely close enough for you to shoot them. All right, then I'll take a shot. This, this, the one that's, that screeched at you is, is just about 30 feet away from you. Okay. Uh, cool. Both I'm... barrels are one. Uh, uh, let's do one barrel. All right. Make your shot, Buster Callahan. Uh, 
Uh, that's an 11. Uh, plus uh, 13. A 13! That is a success with a raise! Yeah, roll damage. Cool. Can I use Hell a curious yeah. ticket? To, uh, to re-roll your damage? Uh, to give me a d8 on my additional d6. Ah, I see. You're going to use the Sawdust and Showmanship setting right. rule. Yeah. A curious mm. ticket lets you add your performance roll instead of an extra d6 for a raise. Yeah. Oh, that could have been way better. Uh, can I have a curious ticket to re-roll that? Let's see that's Yes. That's an 11 right now. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Uh, nine plus six, 15, 21, oop, 24. 24 damage. Yeah. You fire off that shot, standing between Midas, scrambling on the ground to put his Buchanan ball mounted back on his wrist, uh, and the thing just is annihilated by Buckshot. It leaps huh. towards you in the air, and you fire off a shot, and it kicks back in the air, doing a backflip due to the force and collapsing against a gravestone before it dissolves into a fog and disperses. We we don't have time, Midas. Sorry, sorry. I, I, I almost, I, all right, let, let's get out of here. Three remain and more screech in the distance. These three are close enough to close with you this time. If you're not careful and more are coming, Celestina, a joker! Yes! Hey! Yes! A joker was drawn by Celestina. That means each of you get an additional Benny. And Celestina, once again, let's remember it this time, you get a plus two to your trait rolls and a plus two to your damage rolls. Also, I get rid of my fatigue. And you don't do that. Whoa, that was close, though. Wow. <laughs> no, Very was close. Yeah, you almost got me. Minus. <laughs> you, said it, you said it with, with uh, a, a lot of confidence. Of I think that's, half, that's almost good enough. Yeah, just act like you belong there. Seven of diamonds for Victor. For Buster, a five of diamonds. And for the remaining creatures, a 10 of diamonds. What did I get? Uh, Midas, you got a 10 of clubs. Okay, thank you. Would anyone like to spend a penny to redraw? Yes, I will. Victor, one penny for you. Not a seven of diamonds, but a four of diamonds. However, not for Victor, he's quick. That's so right. not a four. A queen of diamonds. Oh, yeah. There's that upgrade you needed. So, Oof. Celestina, you can go first if you'd like. Otherwise, you can go at any point. If you don't, Victor will be first, followed by the creatures. Uh, I will go. So, wh what I would like to do, can, I'm trying to remember, can I run and do something, just taking a minus two to whatever thing yeah. I do? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I, so, is there one near enough that I can shoot at it? Yeah, there, there are three within about 30 feet of you, so you could easily shoot at one of these things. I wish I could get more of them. Okay, yeah. Mm, okay, I want to do similar to what I did last time. I want to use Vika to support my um, spellcasting role. Um, so I'm going to have her kind of fly down there and just and try to distract them again. Okay. Um, so again, you're gonna have uh, Vika try and give you an opening, the time you need to summon your abilities by distracting them with, uh, by flying down into their faces. Give me athletics for Vika. That, ooh, she aced it. Well done, Vika. Ah, ooh, she aced it again. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> that is a 21. A 21. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, big big time success. Uh, so that's going to give you a plus two to your spell casting roll. That is the max that you can get from one source, Celestina. Okay, so I think what I would like to do is uh, cast elemental manipulation using fire. Can okay. I try to in sort of do it like a, a, a cone? Is no. that... No, That's, okay. That, that is too too powerful for elemental manipulation. Can I hit more than one of them doing that? No, okay. the most, with then, elemental manipulation as an attack, you can only hit one of them. Then I'm gonna leave it to Bolt uh, with additional damage again. Oh, okay. Uh, so this will be at a plus one, no. This will be at just regular with uh, Take plus three altogether, all together, because you have your Joker and the support from Vika. Right, but I'm at a minus one, and I'm also going to run, so I was at a minus two. Flat roll, you're right. Yep. Oh, this is not the right die. That That's emb how embarrassing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I haste it! 
Well done. I aced it again. Oh my god. Uh, that's good. a sixteen. A sixteen? Yes. A Very sixteen good. is a success with a raise for sure. Uh, go ahead and roll damage with an extra d6, Celestina. So that's on top of the already extra damage I was going to do, right? Correct. I, okay. So you empowered it, you get an extra d6, and you add plus two to your damage from the Joker. Ah, okay. So, oh boy. And uh, 17 damage. 17 damage. Yes. Your insects fly out just as Vika clears the sky and moves away from this thing's face. It has just enough time to see a cloud of swarming insects rocketing towards it before it is down on the ground being devoured by small pests until it too dissolves into fog, leaving only two remaining. And now you run? Now I run and I'm also gonna say, Vika, come. All right, all right, Vika comes flying and squawking after you as you take off in the direction that Buster indicated, running away from these things and deeper into the graves. Uh, I got a six. Victor. What? I got a six for my run die. Just, Ooh, you know, boy, you run it. so good. <laughs> uh, you are good very, like, you take off and it's like your feet are barely even touching the ground. Celestina, despite the horrificness of this place, you feel powerful here. Oh, also remember, oh, yeah. you get a free reroll on any spellcasting rolls because this is uh, such a nasty place. Not crit fails though, right? Not crit fails, no. Okay. All right, <laughs> uh, Victor, you're up next. Uh, okay, I'm gonna start running in the same direction. Uh, so I will take a run roll. Uh, I'm gonna take one shot uh, okay. at one of those uh, big baddies. Um, Two remain. This is good. You guys are doing really well. I'll tell you this for free. You do not want these things to get close to you. <laughs> okay, good freebie. Oh no, they liches. Uh, I'm gonna power this with the same stuff. So bullet with your name on it and um, loaded for bear. Also loaded for bear makes it a heavy weapon, which means that my gun probably sounds like a cannon when it goes off at this yeah. point. Yeah, oh, that's an important point. Do it plays Yankee point. Doodle? It, <laughs> no, it, does, it has no time for that. Okay, so I'm gonna shoot. Uh, uh, that's a four, I'll take it. That is a success. Okay, I will roll damage. Uh, so seven so far, six, so 13 plus one plus one is 15 damage. 15 damage, another bright shot goes streaking out of your gun like the blast of a cannon, and the answering blast comes from the explosion of the creature that you shoot with that bullet. Uh, just to double check, was that factoring in the minus two for your run roll? Yes, Your because my uh, bullet with name on it gives me a plus two. So it okay, cool. It. Just yeah. wanted to make sure. Yep. Uh, you annihilate another one, leaving only a single one that comes leaping after you all as you turn and flee as well. Give us your run roll, Victor. Okie dokie. I also got a six. Hey. Oh, also a six. All right. Yeah. You turn and you are right on Celestina's heels, bobbing and weaving through the field of gravestones and markers as you try and keep up with her. Wh when I catch away, up to her. I'm gonna say, I got three, but who's who's counting, right? <laughs> I got two and I exploded them with insects. Can you say as much? Keep running! All right, um, it is their turn now, or its turn rather, as it comes leaping off of the gravestone. <sighs> Buster, you are the only person remaining here right now, apart from Midas. Um, I am going to have it, what's up? <laughs> I said, I'm a person. Midas, as you stand back up, <laughs> attaching the cannon to your arm, you see the thing come leaping out towards you, arms outstretched, and as its face stretches out into a ghoulish smile, you see it start to rotate its hands until they are spinning like the blades of a blender, a machine that you don't know anything about yet at this <laughs> point. But both of them come out. It is going to attack Buster twice, Midas twice. What? So Yikes. It's, it's Shadow General Grievous. Got it. <laughs> oh no. All right, Buster. Hello there. Um, both of these are uh, going, all of these attacks are going to be at a minus two. It has improved frenzy, but it is taking a multi-action here. So one of those hits is going to miss Buster, but the other one aced. Uh, that is a 10 minus two is an eight. What is your parry? Five. 
five. That is definitely going to be a hit, Buster. As you feel its shadowy form move towards you, it solidifies as it comes in contact with your flesh, and you feel the tearing of its claws as they fling themselves around you. This is going to be, sorry, be sick. Hey. Uh, that's trash. I'm gonna spend a f curious ticket to reroll my damage. Oh, no, come on. Oh, that's an ace. Oh, come on. Yep, there oh, we go. 11 damage, Buster. Toughness is five. Okay, so that is going to be a hit with the raise. You'll be shaken and wounded unless you soak. Uh, I will soak. Okay, you're gonna spend a Benny to soak. Give me vigor. Uh, that's a four. Four is a success. You feel the touch of its sharp whirling claws and you jerk back instinctively before it's able to sink them into the flesh of your shoulder and face, just barely staying in front of it. However, Midas, its other hand whirs towards you. Oh, that's an ace. Oh, come on! Okay, Midas uh, is tough. He's a big tough a boy. A 13 and a five. Do, th do those hit my parry of two? Yes. <laughs> it seems like they might. Okay, so one is going to hit. They do. One is going to be a hit with a raise. So this is the normal hit. Uh, seven damage, Midas. That meets my toughness. Okay, uh, it, its hand comes whirring out and starts to tear into you, but is kept at bay by your the, the tough, sturdy stock of your adventure's apron. However, you are shaken by the <laughs> furiousness of this attack. And here comes the second one. Uh, that is an ace. Oh. No! What the taken. hell? 17 damage. Ooh. You said five was your toughness? No, I said seven was my toughness. Seven, okay, oh, well that's, that's better. Fun. That's a hit with a raise. With That's a hit with two raises. So you're already yeah. shaken, you would take two wounds unless you soak. All right, well, here goes soaking. One Benny. One Benny for Midas to soak. Ooh, I rolled a one and a two. Oh. Not good. Oh, I'm no. gonna use a curious ticket. Curious ticket to reroll. That's a three and a two. Oh, okay, no. um, here's a Benny. Another Benny. Come on, Midas. Okay, I aced on a six. Okay, cool, cool. cool. Okay, I double aced. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, so I got 17. 17, Ooh. all right, Midas. As it only it, cost me a bunch of Benny, or two To whir into your apron, you move your body forward so that one random metallic piece inside of your apron, a little thingamabob, a, 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 a thingamajig, uh, something of that matter, uh, comes <laughs> flying out of it and gets caught up in the whirling of claws, uh, distracting the thing and making it stop as it tries to shake this metal piece off of its hand as you scoop back. You have also unshaken yourself by doing that. Um, I, is... I I have to self-narc real quick because I was shaken and distracted oh. and totally did not resolve those. You are right. So. And actually being distracted, your shot would have missed. Exactly, <gasps> yes. Um, um, so let me try to unshake first. I killed more. Okay. I, we're tied, actually. <laughs> um, so let me unshake first. Yeah, but she killed more without cheating. Uh, so that's a failure for unshaking. So I'm just going to use my last Benny to make that to unshake automatically. Unshake. All right, so and you then, unshook. And that shot would have missed then, so that thing it, did not die. It would have, but since they already went, can I spend a curious ticket on your behalf so you can at least try and re-roll that? Um, and we oh, can the, use a resource uh, to justify it? Oh, sure. So I should re-roll my shake roll? Uh, your shooting roll. Oh, I'm shooting roll. one of your curious tickets so that you can re-roll to try and hit that. I gotcha, I gotcha. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, that is a six, minus two is a four. There we go, we have maintained internal continuity. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, so Vic, or Midas, it is your turn now. Uh, okay, so this thing is right on us, right? Yeah, right on you and Buster. And it's just one of them though, right? Just the one remaining, although you hear the distant screeching of more and you see the light continue to shine in the sky above you. Okay, in that case, Midas is just gonna do what comes natural and Grab it, you know, now that he's got the little soldier back on it, he's gonna slap the button on it and uh, launch a Buchanan ball at it. All right, <laughs> give me your weird science roll. So it's, it's right next to you. Um, so you do have to meet its parry. Okay. 
I, I looked it. that up. That is true for spell casting in melee as well. Makes Interesting. sense. Interesting. Okay. Good to know. Uh, can I get a curious ticket? You can indeed. Oh no! Where are I wants to die. Uh, okay, so that is a five. A five is a success. Yes. Roll damage. All right, and uh, damage, since I didn't pump it up, it's just 2d6, I think? Uh, yes. Yes, 2d6, okay. As a Buchanan ball fires out and whizzes illuminated towards this thing, roll your damage. All right, I got 14 damage. 14 damage uh, nice. is enough to just shred this thing. Your Buchanan ball blows a far larger hole in the middle of this creature than its size would seem to indicate. And the thing pulls at the hole inside of itself, almost in frustration and terror as it rips itself apart and dissolves into a fog on the ground around you. But still, you hear more shrieks. Do you uh, want to follow after your fleeing companions? Yes, I'll be there. But thank thank you for coming back. Let's go. Yeah, everyone's hit one now, so we can all go. All right, let's go. Let's everyone, go. <laughs> everyone did it across the board. All right. Um, so you take off. You're not going to be able to run, Midas, but you're a little bit behind. Uh, and you are following after the figures of Celestina and Victor weaving through the gravestones. Buster, you hear screeching coming from the direction those things were coming from, but also from every side of you, not from behind you, the direction your companions are going, and you see more dark shapes and heads popping up from behind gravestones, still far out, but closing quickly. What would you like to do? Um, push people to the opposite direction of wherever those scre screeches are coming from, I think. All right. So you have gotten a front row seat to see that you have more pursuers coming, and you take off back in the direction of your uh, fleeing comrades, yeah. shouting out to keep going in that direction, yes? Yeah, yeah. Give me a run roll. That's a one. The one. A one? A one. All right, mm -hmm. um, you managed to break <laughs> just ahead of Midas, who seems a little uh, distracted and winded by his earlier expenditure I'm kinda, of I'm energy. I'm kind of crab running. I'm, I'm kind of running to the side like, come on, we have to go this way. So it's come not really on. fast. Come <laughs> on. Yeah. Yeah. As you flee, you all hear more shrieking cries from all around you reverberating strangely through this giant void. And then Celestina and Victor, Way up ahead of you, you see a face pop up from behind the gravestones. Not a horrifying, monstrous face, but a very human-looking one, wearing some curious glasses. Oh my god, quickly, this way, hurry! Over here, I can help! And then the woman ducks down beneath the gravestone. Uh, okay. What are you all doing? Should I deal out cards, or are you all going to run towards that figure? I'm running, yeah. I'm running yeah, that's my plan. Good. Yeah, run towards that figure. With the lack of a better plan presenting itself, you all run in the direction of those shouts, and as you go sprinting, looking behind you, illuminated by the flare and the continual crashing of lightning, more dark shapes jump from gravestone to gravestone, closing in on you like a forest full of angry simians as they come screeching towards you. You all run towards that grief gravestone and looking over the edge, you see what looks like a small metallic hatch, a circular hatch in the ground uh, that has a ladder going down into darkness. Heading down the ladder? Yep. Yeah. Sure. We're all That's in a great. hurry. So can I get an athletics roll at a minus one from each of you to make it down the ladder without incident? Slide down the ladder, that's what I want to do. And Midas, you're gonna be last, so it's up to you to close the hatch behind everyone. Can I okay. get a, uh, I'll need a curious ticket? Curious ticket for Buster, and one for Midas as well? Me Same too, yes. please. And one for Celestina. Four for Buster. Eight. Eight, eight. for Celestina, success with the race, success with the race for Midas. Uh, also, Eleven. Eight, that's kind of funny. Eleven, all right. Everyone, um, Victor, uh, or actually Celestina, you were in the lead. You jump down, just 
essentially grabbing onto the rails of the ladder and using it to slide down into the darkness. Uh, about 20 feet you slide on the rails of this ladder before your feet settle on solid ground, what feels like metallic ground. And looking up, you see your companions coming down uh, above you. You move to the side to give them room to come down and Victor comes sliding down right behind you, just yes. barely giving you enough time and space to clear the way before he crashes to the ground. Moving back as Buster comes clamoring rapidly down the ladder, not sliding, but moving as quickly as possible, trying to get down out of the darkness. And Midas, you leap down behind, and as you come down, you pull the hatch closed on top of you all, <sighs> leaving you all in darkness down here at the bottom of this hatch. And as you stand there for a moment, catching your breath and letting your eyes adjust once again to more darkness, you hear the sound of gears and clockwork moving all around you, and from behind you, there glows a soft light. It looks like there's a passageway behind you that leads further into some area that is glowing warmly. What would you like to do? All right. I have a question. Yes. Did I see the lady? Were we, could me and Buzz like see her or we just? I don't think you saw her. You probably just heard her and saw Celestina and Victor take off in that direction, but you guys were further back. Uh, so you probably didn't get uh, a, a glimpse of her. Uh, go towards light, I suppose, right? Where, 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 wherever this place is, it, it can't be worse than out there. Well, I mean, anything possible here. <laughs> but you know, you're right. Uh, it, it'll definitely be better, Midas. No worries. Everybody in one piece? Y'all all right? Uh, surprisingly, um, yes, mostly. I don't feel quite right here, but that's not a no. <laughs> From up above the ground, you hear distant screeches and the answering screeches of more muffled somewhat by the separation of the ground above you between them, but not so muffled that the sound doesn't still put your teeth on edge. I have to say, I, I, I was pretty freaked out by all that, but at least the, the soothing sound of clockwork and machinery just helps me calm down a little bit. I, the, yeah. Does that, that thing's locked, right? We locked it? I, I, I pulled it closed. Okay, well, hopefully that's enough. <laughs> I'm gonna start marching down that path. Okay, right? Victor, you, you turn and just start moving down the pathway, heading towards the glowing light. All right. I'll, yeah. I will follow. Okay. Let's go, yes? Mm -hmm. You all follow Victor uh, down the passageway, and after about uh, 15 feet or so, it turns and opens up to a very curious looking room for all intents and purposes it looks like you have walked into the workings of a gigantic clock on the far wall across from you is the backside of a huge clock face its arms moving and twitching in time with the spinning gears this place seems to have been built out of metal underground like some sort of clock bunker and there is a small stove over in the corner where a woman dressed very curiously, <clears throat> some sort of scarf and strange glasses uh, of a design and a material that you have not seen before, uh, looks around. She seems sprightly, but elderly. It, it's strange. She almost looks frail and hardy at the same time. She's slender and slim with silvery golden hair tied up in a messy knot above her head, but a not unkind expression on her face as she turns. Oh, oh, you. You made it. I, I wasn't sure if you were going to. Yeah, I, I, I think neither were we at, for a moment there. Thank, thank you for uh, uh, getting us out of that, but... Uh, well, don't thank me just yet, as she reaches behind uh, something nearby and pulls out what looks like some sort of hybridized crossbow made of gears and mechanical objects, as well as bone and sinew, and points it at you all. Who are you? And what are you... What brings you to this place? I'm gonna quick draw Are my gun. Are you real? As well, when she does that. You cock your gun? I'm gonna quick draw my gun. I, I'd holstered it, but I'm gonna quick All draw right. it. You quick draw your gun as she does that, and immediately she swivels the crossbow over towards you. Careful now. Okay. Listen, you don't want to uh, go toe to toe with him. 
so you might put this thing down we obviously are stuck here and i assume you are as well uh not to uh, step step on 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 our your hospitality too but did did you make that did i make what okay that um, the, the, the 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 uh the oh this uh yes yes i was able to cobble it together out of bits and bobs my own design okay we uh uh <laughs> Hi, my name is uh, Buster Callahan. Hi, you can call me Buzz. Um, we are clearly strangers here. Uh, we were not meant to be here. We were traveling through the hunting grounds with the carnival that we belong to, and that's the God's honest truth. Now, we're able to get to you, but you have us at a disadvantage here and and we do not mean you any trouble but uh i i guarantee if you do fire that thing there will be some buster can you give me a persuasion roll please sure uh that's a five a five which is a success this will not be opposed she wants to believe you so badly buster you can see it in her face you can tell that she is wary and frightened, but also there is something about her that seems desperately to want you all to be here. All right. Well, I suppose I've already played my hand. I, I took a risk trying to help you when I heard what was going on up there. I suppose a little more trust couldn't hurt. And she looks over at you, Victor. What do you say? Should we both put them down on the count of three? All right. One, two, three. And she just sort of pulls the crossbow back and points it up towards the ceiling near her head, taking her finger off of the firing mechanism. Victor, do you respond in kind? Yeah. Uh, I want to know if it's all right with you, who the hell you are and how the hell you here and what is this place and how do you find it and how do you live here? How long have you been here? Answer all these questions, please. That's quite a lot of questions, my dear, and I have many of the same for you as well. Perhaps we should trade questions and answers back and forth. Now there's a game I haven't played in ages. Well. We were on a train that uh, tried to uh, tempt us with uh, ah, magical... Ah, my this. You don't what? just give answers away. This is part of the game. Oh. We get one, we give one, and so on. We ain't got time for games, all right? What the hell's going on around here? Well, uh, how much How much can we get for the magic train temptation? Uh, please, uh, fact. please. Per perhaps we should, we should just take a moment. You've been through an ordeal. And uh, I, I, I'm sure that you're all shaken up, but I, I can assure you this place is Ace, you're totally safe here. You're going to be okay for the time being, at least. So everyone just take a seat, let the fire warm your bones, and relax for just a moment, and we'll talk. How's that sound? Peachy Keen? What? 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 You... you does you that sound peaches. good? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Fine. Yes. Yeah. So sounds fine. Sounds fine. All right, so you all look around and you see no chairs, but what looks like some uh, benches set into the wall, uh, kind of supported by giant gears that rest on the ground. Uh, it seems like that's the only place to sit in here. And, and she gestures towards them as she herself reclines on one across the room from you. Uh, I, I go and sit on one and uh, uh, Vika just flies like right over her head and over oh. to me. Oh, well, this is uh, one of yours. I thought perhaps a, a bird had wandered in from the outside. No, this Vika. Well, uh, Vika, it's a pleasure to meet you and all of you as well. Uh, uh, my name is Winifred Alworth and I'm, I'm ever so delighted to make your acquaintance. Mm. Nice to well. meet you, Winifred. Yes, sir. Uh, Midas Buchanan. Oh, thank you very right. much. For a moment, I thought that perhaps uh, all manners had gone out the window in this place. A pleasure to meet you, Midas Buchanan. She extends her hand to you. 
Midas kind of like reaches out and takes it and gives it a little like awkward shake. All right. Ah, uh, yes. Well, that's uh, I'm sorry. I, 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 I don't. I don't know what the etiquette is in in endless graveyard uh, territory. So, uh, who among us does? <laughs> Celestina Moldovana. Pleasure. Victor Parrish. Oh, strong, silent type, of course. I already introduced myself. Yes, you did. <laughs> you seemed like a friendly face to end the circle on. Yeah. Well, uh, I've heard your story, traveling with a, a carnival, it seems, and look at your clothes. Well, aren't you a curious bunch of performers? Uh, uh, tell me, uh, whereabouts are you from out, well, not out there, but out, out there in the, the actual world? Uh. I, I don't know. Where uh, were we, we were, lost? We Kansas? Were, uh, yeah, Kansas was the last place we were. Hmm. Americans. I thought so. And not American. No, she's a uh, princess. From Kansas? Really? Mm -hmm. Of all the things. Hey, I... Uh, excuse me. Duchess? What is it? This not better. You know, you just rub it in. <laughs> I'm sorry. Kansas has royalty. Where are you from? Little. No, not the. Ro no, listen. I I'm from Kansas. <laughs> well, it's clear that the place we are now is not Kansas anymore. But I, that's pretty Dick much all we know. <laughs> I, I, I I'm sorry. I, I we uh, all, all that we know is is we were uh, oh. on <laughs> our journey Wizard somewhere of Oz. and we ended up. You know what? wizards. What? The Wizard, Wizard of Oz. Uh, we're not in Kansas anymore, Toto. <laughs> Listen, lady, can you stop saying words that Where's... we don't understand? Yeah, we don't know anybody from Oz. I mean, I. Celestina, does that hey, ring a bell? Hang on. <laughs> no, out of, out of character question. Would Celestina be able to put some of these pieces together? Kind of. Put some of what pieces together, Celestina? The out of time pieces. Why don't you we give me a kinda... smarts roll? Uh... Or actually, you know what? Not smarts, because you're not resisting anything. Give me common knowledge. Okay. Well, that one's worse. I feel like this should be whoa, uncommon whoa, whoa. knowledge. No, it's common. <laughs> oh no, he can't stop talking. Like... Yes, he can. He just chooses not to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is who I am now. An eight. An eight, a success with the race. Celestina, her manner of speech her manner of dress, her mannerisms in general, all of the things she's talking about, this is not familiar. She's, she, some of it is, but some of it seems very strange and, and very different. And as you're thinking that, uh, she says, uh, tell me, I've been here for quite some time and things have a way of slipping away from you. Uh, what year is it again? Oh, well, this is, uh, this is hunting ground, I don't think any year exists here, oh, but we right. left, oh, what year was it? Uh, 18, 18, 18, 1884. 1884. 84. 84. 84. Yes, yes. Uh, 1884. Of course. 1884, well, that makes sense. And what time are you from? Because I gather it's not that fun. <laughs> Clever one. Yes. yes well, I'm from well, I'm from 1947. Oh, what, it, what does that mean? I, I, I'm sorry. You're you're from 1947. That's correct. Where in 1947? Oh, all over the place. I am an explorer. Well, a member of the Explorer Society, at least, or, or rather, I used to be. We all. We all used to be. All right. This is, she's gone insane or something living down here for so long. Oh, you what know. What are you talking about, lady? Actually, Victor, um, it's a strange thing with hunting ground travel. You can go and move through uh, space, but also sometimes time. I mean, it all just kind of collects in one place. It doesn't matter which time you came out of, I think. You seem pretty knowledgeable for some people who are about to be consumed by Manitou. Manitou. Man, of what? I give up. <sighs> Look, whatever is going on here, or whatever is trying to consume us, is, is is there a way that we can get back out? We we need to try and and find our our carnival and 
and you can get to the next place. Otherwise, when the machines start breaking down, they're not going to have anything to do, and they 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 need us. They need us. We're supposed to be there. She looks at you, Midas, and suddenly she seems less lucid and and a bit uh, confused. Uh, get out! There, there is no out. This is this is it. This is uh, no. This is all of it. No, we will not settle for this. Yeah, we no. will not leave here. We've traveled through the hunting grounds before. There, there, there's a road that that you can get on and get through the hunting grounds. We've done it a number of times. Like my dear, sweet summer child, those roads are far, far away from here. You are in the shadowlands of the hunting grounds, down in the place below the roads and the paths where things go to die okay. or to live. Well, I, uh, as quaint as this clockwork house is that you have, uh, I, I don't belong here and I don't think any of us really do. So we, we... all made it together, you know, this, this place, the four of us, and Lottie. Oh, Lottie taught us how. Lottie taught us lots of things and helped us stay alive down here. We'd have, we'd have been chewed up and spitting out and food for worms, if not but for her. If we got here, then it stands to reason that there's a way to get back out, yes? Where is this Lottie? She's gone. Gone, so where... gone, or? They're all gone. There were there were four of us. I, I might have mentioned that before. Mm -hmm. All ex explorers right. set yeah. off on a on a mission to to map the other side. Oh, we were we were so sure we were going to be successful. Come back conquering heroes, but we got lost. We ended up down here. And we met Lottie. Oh, charming little sweetheart. What a, a golden haired little girl, no more than six. But she showed us how to stay alive, but, but it wasn't enough. They died or were lost one by one until it was just me and Lottie. But she was taken. Taken? By who? Just a couple days ago, or a couple weeks, maybe months. Time's what? funny down here. I think, well, I think it, I think it might have been my fault. Well, what did you do to lose child? It was a fairy tale my father used to read me about goats and a bridge with a troll that lived under it, and I, I hated that troll as a child. Terrifying beast. I think, I think I might have made it. I think it took Lottie. It, this place, it does things to you fears. I think it pulled mine out and made it real. Well, uh, uh, are we safe here? Are we safe here now? Well, of course you're safe here. Well, this place is a sanctuary. Uh, we built it that way, of course. Lottie showed us how. Uh, there's nothing that's going to happen to you so long as you stay here underground with me uh, forever. Oh, <laughs> right. Um, well, don't worry. It's not all that bad. You don't need to eat or, or drink or, or even sleep, really. There's plenty of time to watch the gears turn. I like eating and sleeping and drinking. I also like these things. I, I admit, just being able to watch gears turn all the time sounds tempting, but we, we can't just stay here. We can't leave. Now that you've just gotten here, I mean, I, I, I'm so alone. 
come with us. You can join Carnival. It would be very interesting. Woman from future. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I saw what happens when you try and leave. I, I saw firsthand what happens. There's no so getting out of here. Well, you'd rather leave in the hell? It's not a question of what I'd rather. It's a question of what is. Well, oh, oh, wait. You, you, you haven't considered uh, some of the facts that are that are part of the situation now. Because when you all were here, you 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 were, were trying to find your way out, but there's one important factor that, that was not considered in that is now part of things, and that is that there are people looking for us. That we fell in here and and Nightlinger and 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 everyone else in the carnival, they, they, they'll, they'll be looking for us and they, they know how these things work. They, they'll, they'll be able to find us. So they, I'm sure they've got some way to, 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 na to navigate through these areas and, and, and find where we are. She looks at you sadly for a moment and then says, come here for a moment and stands up and walks over to a, a bucket of what looks like still clear water in the corner. And she dips her finger into the water and raises it up and lets a single droplet of water fall off the tip of her finger and into the bucket. And she, without looking at you, Midas, says, now find that droplet. I'll go over and I'll try and find the droplet of water. Oh, wait, wait, she dropped it back into the water? <laughs> she dropped it back into the bucket, yeah. <laughs> okay, I got it, got it. But, I, but I appreciate oh. your enthusiasm. Got him. Oh, yes, okay, I, you know what, for a moment, I thought, I thought she had dropped it on the ground. I, I, <laughs> okay, well, okay, no, I, I can't do it right now, but if you gave me enough time and, and a way to identify what water had touched your fingers, I bet I could find that water. In fact, give, 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 me, give, give me a moment, let me think My about this, it. You remind me of Simon. Right. No, no, I, I know that what you're doing is a metaphor here for, for the greater situation, but, but it's, that's not the situation. Watch. And Midas is going to kind of go over and take Christopher and start just like mumbling him to himself and like tinkering with him and trying to just like get him working again. Okay. Great. Listen, uh, I, I know it's upsetting. And I know you've been through a lot, but you, you get used to it, really. I'm I refuse to get used to anything. We get out of here is what we do. It's only option. Yeah. We we can fight those things. I, I, I know that there's a lot of them, but... You have no idea how many of them there are. You saw what? A dozen, maybe? This place is vast and they are innumerable. And sure, you could pop a couple from a distance, but what happens when you run out of bullets? What happens when you run out of all your fancy tricks? I'll tell you, I've seen it. You die screaming and in pain and begging for your mother. And then you'll turn our bones into that weird crossbow. Is that what happens? No, 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 I, I wouldn't do that to my companions. I don't know what happened to their bodies. Lottie might know. Lottie knows most things, but she's gone. Okay. There gone like dead can... or gone like something else? Unlike taken, damn it. I told you that the, the thing, it, it, it came out of my own nightmares and it, it took it, it took her back to that well, to wherever it is that it lives. All right, where's it live? Well, I, I, I'm sure I don't know. Oh, well, that sounds like a lie. Winifred. It does sound a little bit like a <laughs> lie, and it might indeed be one, but in order to find out, you'll have to wait for us to come back from a very quick break. So don't go anywhere, folks. You mysterious strangers at home, we're gonna take care of a couple base needs and we will be right back with you. Because watch, you. if you leave. Welcome back, folks. We are here. We are ready to flee any, any uh, predators having made our bodies much lighter and we are Whoa. ready. 
Go. What? What's up? You guys didn't uh, shed some some poundage? No, no your, your you, audio you just suddenly just, like, went, went started <laughs> clipping and for like crazy. one second. For, like, you turned into a sound monster for like just a moment. Am I better now? Yes. You're yeah. all good. No more ah. sound monster. Let's, uh, oh, it looks like we have a couple toasts and a few things to hand out here before we jump back in. So raise those drinks, everybody. Shimmixen would like us to toast. Shout out to the mods, the true unsung carnival workers of the night. <laughs> wait, wait, that sounds a bit off. Shrug. Set them <laughs> up and knock them down. Thank you very much, Shimmixen. Yes, thank you. Also, thank you, mods. Deacon's Table would like to give one point of, uh, I'm sorry, one curious ticket to me, the ringmaster. Thank you for Ooh. that, Deacon's Table. <laughs> but Flynn WD, Uncle Fuzz 5, Corey D. Don, and Emperor Riptide would each like to give a curious ticket to the players. Thank you. Thank you. I will put that over Thank there you. in your pile and let us jump right back in. Winifred, where did her scarf go? Winifred's scarf? What, what did I? I don't know. I just had it. All right, fine. She doesn't have her scarf. Did you leave Damn. it in the bathroom? Maybe. Uh, <laughs> Winifred had just told you that uh, she has uh, no idea where Lottie was taken, but uh, Celestina, you noticed that seemed to be a lie. I'm just saying, if Winifred doesn't have the scarf, I'm treating her as a new character. Well, I'm finding the scarf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Listen, no, let me tell you, that is not actually a scarf. It is this really cool, uh, I forget what they're called, cravat. It's oh. super cool. It's hard to tell the color, but it's cool in person. All right, I found it. I, I have it with you. I have the foggiest idea. I'm sure I don't know. It, it's all confusing and a mishmash down here. It's better just to stay. Let me ask you a question, uh, uh, Winifred. Did you see any of the things we did to those uh, Manitou out there? No. No, I oh, didn't. So you have no idea uh, who you're currently lying to. <laughs> That's funny. You might not want to do that. Just a thought. You're so young. All of you, really. So young and, and sure that, well, you're the ones that can solve the world's ills. That you're undefeatable, invincible even. I remember the look. Hell, I used to see it in the mirror. But it doesn't matter what you can do or what you can't do. This isn't your world. It's theirs. And it's only a matter of time. You think those things up there are the worst that can be found down here? Those, are, those are nothing. Those are worker bees. There's oh. far, far worse things down here in the Shadowlands, here there, in the hunting grounds in general. There are some quite bad things in the uh, above world as well. Hmm. Listen, we may look young. But technically, we're 63 years older than you are. And, uh... <laughs> At least. <laughs> we, uh... Could really use some help here. And I kind of think you might as well. Now, if you could give us some idea of where Lottie is. It just... Something to go off of, because... I know that people can leave the hunting grounds. It's it's possible. We just need a, a, a way to get there. And if this Lottie is as knowledgeable and everything as you say, then I think we might be able to work out a deal of some kind. Sure, I can't convince you to stay. I'm an excellent hostess. I, I promise to value your, your personal space and your privacy and maybe we could expand this place out the, the five of us working together turn it into a, a real home hard pass i say you come with us instead seems way better way more interesting time <laughs> move normally you can eat and sleep and die eventually which in your case might be a mercy yes when I die, it'll be on my terms. Hmm. I've seen 
Far too much, death. Well, then, 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 then why not put things on your terms? Is, is, is this how you want to go? Just sitting in, in a solitary fortress, hoping that you can make it through day by day as, as everyone you know is gone? If you, if you want to die on, on your own terms, maybe, maybe this is the opportunity. Maybe we need to get out of this place and, and find our way somewhere. I may have been down here for months, maybe years, maybe decades or centuries. Hell, maybe it's been 200 years that I've been down here in the dark. And yes, I would rather stay here than venture out there. And if that doesn't convince you to stay, well, then I know nothing will. Well, we've been here like an hour and a half now, so maybe give us a little more time for our souls to be beaten down by the realities of the hunting grounds. But at, at the moment, I, I think that there is a ch if there is a chance that we can make it out, then, then we've got to take that chance. Somehow, I, I don't think you're going to have the time to lose your souls, but if you are insistent on it, hell, maybe you've got a shot. Maybe you will make it. I mean, if you can rescue Lottie, maybe she can get you out of here. We can get you out of here, too. I'm sure you can. It's not so easy to tell you where this place is. Time doesn't work right down here, nor does distance. But I can tell you that if you head in a direction long enough, thinking about where it is that you want to be, well, eventually, <clears throat> If you can survive long enough, you make your way there. Most times, at least. Okay, so what you're saying is if we imagine finding Lottie, eventually we will. Oh, no. No, no. Nothing so easy as that. Just that if you're looking for Lottie, and if you're looking for what it is that took her, Eventually, you'll find that, right. or it'll find you. Queen B, right? All right. Oh, no, I I don't know if it's a queen B. I wouldn't toot my own horn that much. No, I, I think it's just something that was scooped out of my nightmares and made real just for fun. Well, can you? <laughs> we had things scooped out of our brains and made real. Uh, just recently, and we made it out of that okay, so. Can you give us a little taste anyway, so we have some idea of what we might be looking for? I always called it the troll. Big, brutish, purpley skinned thing with dead gray eyes. If you want to find it and you can stay alive long enough and avoid all those things up there well i imagine you'll find your way right to its front door but see that's the thing you're gonna get torn to pieces before you even make it there there's a legion of those things up there uh well here's my question what do you know about those things up there how do they know it's us is it smell is it Sight? Is it uh, what they hear? You know? My best guess is it's some combination of all of them plus a few extra senses thrown in for good measure. This is their world down here, their rules, but they aren't exactly the, the brightest tools in the bunch. They oh. do love the light, though. The Any light. sort of light pulls them like moths to a flame. Figured that out. That's why it's so dangerous up there. You can't see. 
until they're already there upon you. And if you bring a light with you, why they find you all that much quicker. Do you have some way to travel underground? I don't. Just this sanctuary here, but if you're careful and you're quiet and you stick to the shadows, who knows? You might oh, survive. We might be able to travel in dark. I mean, uh, Midas and I could figure out ways to see in dark. I can and see then, a little bit. Yes, and then uh, Buzz and Victor, you could uh, follow us. Yes, thought. Sounds like a plan. I'm in. Have I had any luck tinkering with Christopher, like getting him to turn back on? Yeah, he wasn't broken. Uh, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Just kind of jarred. Uh, you don't even need to make a repair roll. After a few moments, just tightening things and loosening things just the right amount, Christopher's uh, dead eyes open back up slowly, and then he blinks three times in rapid succession and shifts his head back and forth from side to side. Initializing, initializing. Hmm. I'm okay. Christopher. Okay. Okay. Now this is how... good. Oh At least my. things are slightly back to normal. Isn't that charming and upsetting all at once in equal measures? Mm -hmm. That's ah, good yes. way to put it. <laughs> uh, Winifred, th this is Christopher, as he said. Um, he's my Charmed, invention. I'm sure. Uh, Christopher, say hello to the nice lady. I'm Christopher. He I minds work doffing his hat. <laughs> Oh, well, he's a, he's just a little charmer. I'm sure one day he'll grow up and just slay the ladies. Grow up? <laughs> <laughs> Not slay somebody, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, he's a great bit. Is he to die with you up there? Well, uh, that's, that's a good idea, Midas. Maybe you should just let Christopher live down here in the hole with the crazy lady. Oh, I'd treat him so well, like my own. <laughs> she needs him. I, 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 I mean, well, uh, let's let's be real. He's he's not he's not a living creature. He's he's just an invention that I'm I'm, yeah, I'm no, working he, on. And there's no boy parts in there. Yeah, he's not made with boys that, that we know of, actual, for children. sure. Right. I, I'm I'm sorry. I, I I I I can't leave him. He he's he's unfinished. It it, it could be dangerous. That's fine. I was just fooling about. I wasn't. <clears throat> Midas shoots an angry look at Victor. <laughs> well, if I can't convince you, I, I've told you what I know. I suppose you could rest here for a moment if you'd like to recover your strength and then, well, I assume you'll be going. Well, we might as well take the opportunity. We don't know when we'll get another one, right? You have. So you guys gonna gonna take just a, a a bit of time to rest and recuperate before heading out? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Um. So. As you do that, uh, the mysterious strangers in chat have unlocked our final reward tier for the evening, which is called Manifest Your Destiny. Uh, oh. And we will get to that uh, later on. But not only that, we have also unlocked a draw <gasps> from the draw. mystery box. Draw? <laughs> the mystery box now filled with suggestions from chat and more Ooh, that I need to put in there. Oh boy. All right. Um, Change seats. This one will happen <laughs> right now. Did minutes. someone go to Virginia? Uh, Coconut Shy. Each character rolls athletics minus two. Anyone who succeeds gets a coconut or a Benny if coconuts are not easily distributable. This one <laughs> comes courtesy of Owen Lean. So uh, this is, I believe, a reference to a traditional carnival game. So if you all can oh. an athletics roll at a minus two in order to win a coconut of a Benny from the mystery box card. Oh, all man. right. I got, I got a two and a one. 
All right. So I failed. Failure for Midas. I so, failed. Don't worry, failure I failed for Victor. way worse. I got a critical you, failure. Okay. <laughs> You crit fail. This is a mystery box card, and it's meta. So I'm not going to punish you for the crit fail by like taking away a Benny or something. <laughs> you lose a Benny. <laughs> no. That All right, like you're right. Fine, I won't do it. No. <laughs> Buster, did you get that coconut? No. I rolled a None four you... minus two. None of you got it. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, I apologize. Wait. What's, what? what's 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 that like carnival song about coconuts? You, you tell me. I, I was like not aware that was a thing. Come into the carnival, you're going to no, eat No, no, there, there, there's like a That's song. Good night, like, carnival. You can win Every day's a party. Coconuts. Everybody gets a coconut. All right, well, actually, nobody oh. got a coconut. No one even got a Benny. <laughs> you all, for carnival performers, are terrible at the games. And why were you playing <laughs> oh. them anyways? You know they're rigged. Uh, yeah. So thank you very much for the opportunity, Owen Lean. But it does indeed seem that these folks are coconut shy. So uh, thank you very much, chat, for unlocking that. We gave it a try. <laughs> you all oh, rest man. for about an hour, which enables any of you who have power points to regain five of them. Ooh, five of them. And as uh, Winifred prattles on and tries to tell you about herself and learn more about you all, all in an effort you're all relatively sure to distract you and get you to change your minds and stay here. Eventually, you all feel like it's time to leave. Um, so, so I turned to Simon and I said, Simon, if you don't wipe that smug smirk off your face, mister, so help me, I am gonna give you a right case of the Jim Jams. I don't know what that oh. means. Okay, that's, yeah. I don't know that, any of your words. I don't know what you're saying half the time. Write that one down, Miles. Things... We'll, we'll look that one up too. Change no. that much in the future is <laughs> a weird language. <laughs> I can, I'm not liking where we're heading. Oh, uh, darling. The future so, is, well, it's not a pleasant place. Oh, <laughs> why is that? If we stay here, it's definitely not going to be a pleasant place for us, so we Always. best get moving. It's bad uh, all the way down. Look, I, I feel like it might be a bad idea to, to look too deeply into asking questions about things that happen in the future, but I would just want to ask one question. Sure. Do you know the name Schwartz in the future? Is Schwartz Toy Bazaar still a successful thing? Schwartz Toy Bazaar? Well, that's not anything that I've ever heard of. <sighs> okay. Good, good. Schwartz Toy Bazaar. Oh, yes. I no, just uh, well, there is to... a, a gigantic FAO Schwartz store in New York City. Why, it's the crown jewel of the of the toy world, from what I hear. <laughs> My nephew oh, sorry. pleaded to, for me to take him there when he came and visited. Oh, what a wonderland it was when we walked through those front doors. All right, all right. Just I get it. It's store. very good. It's it's a great store. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, listen, they have, a, uh, they dislike each other. Oh, uh, he very much, it, uh, it's fine. <laughs> Don't worry. Yes. I'm yeah, Midas, sorry to hear that. Uh, Midas makes toys for us, but he does not, uh, like FAO Schwartz, who makes toys for other people. Well, I... Sounds like you don't have to anymore, Midas. You can do something else now. Well, oh, well, there's not much time to worry about that. Right, right. Mm. All right. All right. Ready well, to right. go? We can't convince you to come with us. And I can't convince you to stay. So here we are. Winifred, at least maybe if you if you could give us something small of yours, perhaps we could use it to, if we find a way out, hone in on you, help get you out of here. Well, I mean, if you find Lottie, uh, my assumption is that you would bring her back here, so... But... Unless you plan don't. to take her as well. All, all, all that I'm saying is, if, if that drop of water you had, if, if I had been able to analyze it before you dropped it back in, then, then we could find it, and if, if we, we could find some way to identify you... If wishes were way fishes, out. darling, then we'd all go swimming. Well, then... Let's go swimming, Winifred. 
No. My swimming days are over. Well, if that's what you believe, then you make it a reality, right? I wish you all luck. And I wish you success. I will pray for you. Oh. Mm-hmm. All right. Pray too hard. <clears throat> uh, all right. Thanks for not... your uh, hospitality, Winifred. Of course. Uh, thanks and... for breaking the tedium. Saving we... our lives. Thank you. Yeah. If we find Lottie, we'll come back. I'd very much appreciate that. I'd love to see your darling face at least once more. Mm-hmm. Just, you all go now. You get up that ladder, and you keep low, and you keep quiet, and you don't draw attention to yourselves. And maybe, just maybe, what happened to the others won't happen to you. All right. Let's move. Ta-ta. Ta-ta. Come, Vika. Ah! And you guys turn and leave Winifred standing sadly in the middle of her clockwork sanctuary as you walk down the hallway into the darkness and back to the ladder beneath the hatch. Now, the plan is to traverse the ground above, yes? Unless there's so another way to get- I want you all to tell me what the plan will be, and then we will run that as a quick encounter to get you across the landscape. My thought is that I change into Kit so that I can see in the dark. Kit? Night Cat. Industries 2000? The car? Yes! <laughs> oh my god! You could be a car! We could right, turbo boost out of here! ride in Kit version of Megan. <laughs> Mr. Feeny! <laughs> She can be Kit. Be Kit. <laughs> as long as Car's not around, we'll be fine. Um, so you're so. gonna turn into a cat to try and see in the dark. Mm-hmm. Midas, you're gonna use your owl eye lenses, and the two mm-hmm. of you are going to be in the front and lead Victor and Buzz. Yep. I yeah. Think that or makes I sense. could ride on somebody's shoulder, too, and I guess meow them the direction. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Just tap them with the with your tail. <laughs> All right. One meow for left. Two meows for right. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you what you're up against up here. Okay, left, left. Your rolls for this quick encounter are going to be made at a minus two oh. due to the huge amount of manitous crawling around up here and at an additional minus two for the darkness. So a minus four altogether, unless you can ameliorate those things. You can't do much about the amount of Manitou up there, but you can help with the darkness with your plan. But as you're standing there underneath the ladder, trying to suss this out, all of a sudden, a sensation of peace falls over all of you. A a sudden calm, a, a sort of golden radiance that you feel just pulsing in your chest that that moves upwards, and as you watch each of you in the circle, you see a small momentary flash of gold from behind your eyes. And all of a sudden, it seems a little bit easier to pierce the gloom. The mysterious oh. strangers in chat unlocked Lottie's light. Oh. And so they have gifted you a little bit of a boon to help you traverse the planes above. So now the lighting penalty won't be as much of a difficulty, just the countless innumerable Manitou. So your rolls will be made at a minus two instead of a minus four, thanks to the mysterious strangers. Thank you. Well, thank you. Well, at that point, I probably don't need to be Kit. Probably not. None of us know how to drive anyway, so. Yeah. Fair. I'd be a Celestine. Nope. Okay. I actually do have driving. So with that information in mind, um, what are you? what is the plan to traverse the space up here? You're each Still... going to get to make one roll for the quick encounter. So what is your contribution to making sure you make it across safely? I still think it makes sense for Midas to be near the front um, with, because he still can see a little better than everybody else in the blackness with his glasses, right? 
Um, y yes. Yes. Well, actually, no, at this point. No, it doesn't um, make any difference? Not be because of the sudden golden glow behind your eyes, you all can see uh, fairly well in the okay. gloom. Well, um, I don't know then. Well, um, you know what? Sure. Because of your ally lenses, um, uh, this... No, this gets rid of the lighting penalties, so yes. Okay, yeah, that's fine. No bonus. I'm going to use persuasion to help, or maybe performance, but um, to basically help keep people thinking about Lottie and this nightmare thing and hopefully try to hone in on where this thing is. Okay, so Buzz, you are going to try and keep your companions focused and calm in order to keep them moving forward and help keep everyone's minds focused on your objective so that you can make sure you make it there, yes? Yes. Okay, so that's gonna be persuasion. Don't roll it yet. Okay. Victor. Um, so my idea- or, 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 Yeah, anyone, go for it. Victor, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, uh, uh, my my idea is, so these are Manitous up there and Victor is a Hexlinger and he might not know exactly what Manitous are. Oh, you know what a Manitou is, Victor. You're, sure. a hex, you're a hex slinger, but first you were a huckster and you have played right. some hands of cards against these things. Okay, then, okay, then, then even better then. Uh, so basically he will use that connection to be sort of a radar if he can by using a cult as a connection towards the other side to be like, I can sense where they are. Okay. Even though this sort of of magical nonsense is not always your cup of tea, you're a very straightforward uh, kind of caster here, Victor. You are going to make an attempt to reach out with your other senses and see if you can keep an awareness of your safety and the perimeter. So yes, that would be an occult role. Celestina, sorry, you had your hand That's raised okay. for your contribution. Um, I wanted to kind of bounce off of what Buzz is doing, if I can, and maybe use occult to kind of help uh, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, narrow down the like the way in which we focus. Like, here's a good way to utilize this energy type stuff. Okay, so you are kind. You are going to sort of uh, help what Buzz is doing and and give your companions uh, feedback and and tips on focusing their minds on the objective to ensure that you get there directly and safely. Yeah, yeah, Minus. and. and Oh, sorry, go ahead, Celestine. I was also, also gonna say, I probably send Vika uh, to kind of like um, do a very quiet uh, fly around ahead of us okay. to be able to let us know what's coming. That will happen, but it won't factor into the roles okay. of this uh, quick encounter. Midas. Okay, um, I will, I guess I will use my weird science to try and activate Christopher and send him out just as sort of like a forward guard kind of thing. Uh, okay. Just to, you know, like try and see if there's anything ahead of us. Okay, all right. So that sounds like you're gonna use weird science. Basically between Victor, uh, Vika and uh, Christopher, you're going to try and, and keep like a loose formation around you to uh, have lookouts from various different angles, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Committed to this plan, it's a good plan. You like the plan? I like, like it. this plan. Mm -hmm. Better than sitting in a hole. You Wait, no, the plan is go back to the hole. Yeah, yeah, you no, all I don't like that. <laughs> Jump in the well. Hatch and back to the howling, lightning illuminated darkness of the plains above. Right away, you can hear screeches and answering screeches from those creatures still prowling around this area searching for their recent prey. You know that you're going to need to be quiet and careful here. Whose move goes first? I'll go first. I'll go, go in first. any order you want. I'll go. Buster, okay. talking low and crouched down, you whisper words of encouragement to your companions and remind them what your goal is here. This is a roll at a minus two of persuasion. I'm gonna use a Benny. A Benny to re-roll for Buster. Got the exact same thing. Um, uh, I'll use a Curious Ticket. A Curious Ticket to re-roll for Buster. 
Do I still have fatigue, by the way? You do still have fatigue. I do. Yes, but we rested. Ah. You did rest, but mm. that doesn't get rid of backlash. That goes away after 24 hours. No. Okay, one more Benny. Ew. One more Benny for Buster. Dang it. <laughs> it just moved up like incrementally. That's uh -huh. a total three. Three. Damn. So you all get out into the storm and the darkness and the prowling monstrous shapes around you and Buster, you whisper quietly to your companions words of encouragement and focusing. But as you do that, you hear a cry from off to, your, off to the side and answering cries from all around you. One of them has heard you and they all start converging on you. Buster, as you all get up to run, one of them reaches out and slashes at you Dealing you a wound, unfortunately, Buster. You oh, have failed dangerous. your role in a quick encounter. So it slashes at you and opens a, 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 a just a rending scratch on your back as you all flee out into the darkness, running wildly, but trying to stay together and keep to the plan. Now you are completely unaware of your surroundings and what is happening around you, Victor. It seems like now would be a time to try and reach out with your senses as you all continue to run, hearing the sounds of these creatures pursuing you from all around. Make that roll to see if you can get a feel for them. All right. Occult at a minus two. Oh boy, can you imagine if it was a minus four? That would oh, suck. Man. Could you imagine if it was a crit fail? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is it? Just imagine yeah, it though. Here? Just imagine. Victor, you reach out with your senses once you feel like you've put enough ground between you, putting an arm on your on your companion's shoulders just to steady them while very quickly you pull up your awareness and expand it out forcefully, trying to get a picture of the space around you. And instead you send out waves of energy calling out your position and announcing yourselves like a beacon to these things. And before you even have a chance to open your eyes, Victor, they are coming out all around you. Victor, you critically failed. You were going to take D4 wounds. Uh, what? Ah. Oh no. Is that a four? Oh no. That's a four, Victor. Let's go. Um, so really quickly though, Buster, you can soak that wound if you wanted to. You do have Benny's remaining. Oh, uh, um, yes. How do many Benny's do I have? Uh, this would be your last Benny, Buster. Be my last one. Rip. I will keep it. I'm 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 just gonna t take the wound. I will keep All it. All right, you're gonna take the wound, uh, Victor. You don't have any Benny's left. I don't. So oh, no. as as these things just descend all over you. They rip and tear at you, Victor. You are incapacitated by cool. these creatures. Cool. Uh, I'm going to look up incapacitation here, but we are going to need a vigor roll from you, I believe. Okay. Uh, and as someone who got incapacitated a bunch of times in ETU, I'm pretty sure it's a bigger <laughs> role. Uh, I think, hold on, let me just <laughs> yeah, find only this. When sure. This happens you. so infrequently, I'm always unprepared for it. Um, you'd okay. think I'd learn. I I've just rang the dinner bell to these monsters. You have so it? Now. You okay. make an immediate vigor roll. And then uh, on a raise, you roll on the injury table. It goes away in 24 hours. Um, success, injury goes away when all wounds are healed. Uh, failure, injury is permanent, and critical failure, you die. Okay. Okay. Here Give we go. Give us a bigger roll and don't crit fail. I aced it. Oh. Yes. That's cocked. Uh, well, wait, so my wounds count on this, right? Correct. Yeah. So it's minus so it's, three? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so this is a nine minus three is a six. six. Ah, that is a success, uh, Victor. So, um, will you roll 2d6 for me, please? Okay. Uh, I got a six. A six. Victor, you have been hit. They have just savaged your torso and ripped into your guts. Will you roll 1d6 for me, please? Okay. 
I got a five. Five. You are busted, Victor. Your strength is reduced by a die type until all of your wounds are heal are healed. Oh God. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, I will mark that down. Um. So. I, I believe you're not bleeding out. Okay. Uh, that's good. Um. But. I'm going to say that you are able to remain conscious for this. Your your friends are able to fight blasting these things off of you before you even have a chance to respond. It is over uh, and you're lying on the ground bleeding profusely from uh, your stomach, holding in what feels like most of your intestines and you feel your strength ebbing out of your body. But for the time being, you have bought yourself some respite as you crawl behind a crypt. Celestina, I think everyone could use a reminder of what it is you're supposed to be focusing on here. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes, indeed. At a minus two, right? So minus, minus three two. for me. Uh, uh, can I have a curious ticket? You can indeed. I rolled a three. Don't crit fail this. Tempt bait. Uh, okay, I'm gonna use a Benny, because that's still not enough. A Benny for Celestina. Okay, I aced it. Okay, so that is an eight. An eight, which is a success with a raise. Well done, Celestina. So taking Victor, setting Victor up and everyone clustering around him, trying to make sure that he's okay. It seems like he is in very, very rough shape, but he is still holding it together. Once it seems like he is in no immediate danger of dying on you, Celestina, you try desperately to get your companions' minds to focus on the task at hand, to think about the nightmare creature from Winifred's childhood that she described, to focus on that, to focus on finding Lottie, to keep that in your head and to keep moving. And your intentions refreshed, you start moving. But that is not your only motivation. Still, those things are moving around in the darkness and still they draw closer. So you get up and you keep moving forward. But Midas, you're beginning to get concerned that you don't have enough awareness with Victor out of commission essentially and the others distracted. You decide well, to, yes? Can I change my action? You can indeed. Okay, because he's like, basically incapacitated. I think it doesn't make sense for me to be focusing on on getting Christopher out and mobile. I think I need to try and heal him. Okay, so you decide before you get up, you, you, you get Celestina to pause in her uh, guided meditation essentially for just a moment while you pull out your boo-boo banisher. Yeah, look, <laughs> Victor's gonna hold us back unless we try and, and, and fix him now. Just cover me for a moment. I, gonna, I, I can I can maybe fix this. I'm gonna grab Buzz and pull him real close and say, Buzz, don't let that thing kiss me. Don't you dare! Shut that... the hell up! It's the only way. I, it works, I smack man. him <laughs> and um, uh, pull out the boo boo banisher and activate it, and the little okay. arms come out and so, start. Well, this is going to be your quick encounter roll. So it's weird science at a minus two still. Okay. Uh, can I get a curious ticket? You can. All right. So I'm going to use a Benny. One Benny. A five, which is just down to a three. You've got two by my count left. You have three on your end? Two is what I have. Okay, left. all right, great. Yes. Um, all right. So I got a six. A six is a success. So tell us what happens. So the boo-boo banisher opens up and little hands come out of it and they start like making oh. sutures and trying to close up his wounds as best as they can. And it heals one wound um, off okay. of it. And it, it ends up, after it's done everything it can, a little like pair of lips on it goes oh, and gives no. it a kiss. Oh, come on. It's part of how it works, Victor. It, 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 yeah. Here, take this, come with us. And I hand, a, I, I want to pull a, a pill out of my uh, pocket and hand it to Victor to take. Okay, um, a pill? Yes, it is a tactile desensitizer. 
Okay, so you hand that to Victor and tell him to take it, that it'll make him feel better. But as that is happening, Midas, uh, Christopher just tugs on your shirt and goes, I'm Christopher! And you realize you have stayed here too long as a Manitou leaps on top of a gravestone near you and slashes out. You go stumbling backwards, tripping over your feet and hitting your head against a gravestone. You did succeed, but a success only means you take a level of fatigue from bumps and bruises in a dangerous situation, Midas. So you are fatigued, but your okay. you, of your of your weird science has healed Victor of one wound and scrambling up to your feet, yes. realizing this Manitou is an advanced guard, you all take off again into the night, looking around, keeping your awareness open, Victor feeling a little bit better, but still not at 100%. And then Celestina, as you continue to cry out, to focus, to focus, and Buster is also shouting out encouraging words. Eventually, you all run, and all at once, you feel within yourselves this un unavoidable instinct to leap into the air, and all four of you do all at once. And you come down on your feet somewhere else entirely. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Uh, Victor. Victor, are you all right? Is everyone all right? You all look bad. No, uh, no offense, but you look bad. I, I just got my guts ripped out, but I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm alive. Victor's got the worst of it, I think. Okay. Next time, don't get so wounded, yes? <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You Victor, I can, somewhere... I can take one, one, one more try at that if. If you could hold still for a moment. I don't know if we got the time, Doc. You won't, it'll just take a minute. Oh, I, right. I want to pull out the, um, I want to pull out uh, Buchanan's Boo Boo Banisher and uh, try it one more time. I, I, can you use healing on the same? Yes, uh, you can. Okay, because it's magical healing, right? Magical healing, yes. You can use okay. it uh, multiple times. That makes sense. So go ahead and give us your weird science roll. No penalty this time. Uh, all right. I got a four, but I'm going to use a Curious Ticket and try and reroll it. Curious Ticket to reroll. Just don't critically fail. Oh, God, that would be so bad. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to use one of my bennies. All right, one I really like to clear these out. Ah, uh, damn it. Okay, so it's a seven. So it doesn't quite make it. One right. But it does one. It's a good try. Um, a support role would have helped. Would have been very, very helpful at that point. Um, true, but thanks for telling us. <laughs> hey, thanks for remembering. Um, <laughs> you are patched up a little bit more by the Boo Boo Banisher, and despite your best efforts to roll to the side, you still get a kiss. No, Victor. I, damn it! <laughs> you well, have it doesn't work if the kiss doesn't connect, Victor. That doesn't make any damn sense. Well, okay, that's how it's. That's how it okay. works. That's how I right. it. Okay, fine. Okay. Victor, okay. Where you like are we? Kisses. Thanks for saving my. Uh, what? Thanks for so, saving my life, Doc. We as got everyone to do. is 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 bickering, Buster puts up a hand and says, "All right, all right. Where are we?" <laughs> and you all kind of stop for a moment and look around. You are somewhere else. The sky is still an infinite, empty, featureless black, but you appear to be in a copse of trees and looking down in front of you there's a depression in the ground some sort of not quite a crater just a, a a small valley of sorts and down in that valley is a giant craggy opening to a very dark looking cave and strewn about the opening of that cave are layers and layers of bloody fly ridden bones that look like they have been gnawed and chewed on until most of the meat is gone and then tossed aside. I was a queen bee. That's where I'd live. Ah, we've moved into D and D. What? Uh, it just Nobody like gets that fantasy. reference, Celestina. <laughs> I don't know. We just need a pathfinder to get us through this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Did you guys hear a GURPS? I don't know how to make that work. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Shut up, we're in a savage world! <laughs> Clear right. what do. We're just making a shadow run right now. Oh my god. 
everyone, you're all welcome yeah. for starting this. Uh, we also might go just the tiniest bit long tonight, folks. Okay, well. <laughs> Wait, I got one more. Well, I got one more. <laughs> I don't know, but we might find some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or other strangeness around here. <laughs> okay, that's it. I'm all done. Right. I'm done. Everybody shut up and let's get in that riff. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, I assume this is the right place. Uh, we were all focusing, we jumped, and here we are. So, uh, what do you all know about trolls? Like, he, the, 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 uh, the well, mythology. I mean, the, it, it sounded like the story that she was referencing was the Billy Goat's Gruff. It's a story of three goats that, that are going over a bridge and and uh they continuously trick a troll into getting past it's it's uh it's told using its greed until finally the largest of the the goats comes by and and is able to destroy the troll so maybe if it is actually following the uh the story there then then we could outwit it, it, it maybe it's dumb yes yes maybe we tried to trick it you said with uh, with greed like money, greed. Well, the the goats each, each say that the next goat that is coming is is going to be bigger and better, and and the troll lets them through. Oh well, maybe we say there's another group coming, but then we have to pass back. I don't know. Anyone have thoughts? Well, it, it, I, it may I don't not... think these manatees are going to want to talk to us. Oh, oh, well, I don't know if this is Manitou in same sense is the ones chasing us. I think it's like some kind of manifestation of creature, like uh, Topa in Tibet, Tibetan Topa. Winifred said that, that it, it pulled the information from her brain, that, that, that it created her fears and made them manifest. All right, so like who brain. knows if it'll even continue to be a troll when it sees us. Sure, I suppose Christopher on train didn't work like Christopher, normal Christopher, nor normal. All I'm saying is that be aware of whatever it is you fear because I don't know, maybe it could end up playing off of that somehow. I ain't afraid of nothing. I'm gonna start walking towards it. Oh, 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 Victor, okay. Uh, Victor, ready? You, you ready? Yeah, let's go. Victor, I'm ready, let's go. But so you Victor, first, Tucker. Hold on. Uh, so, Victor, you just walked down into the uh, into the depression and down towards the cave entrance? Slowly, but yes. Slowly? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, slowly. It sounded pretty marchy. Are you sure it was slowly? I'll probably march towards the entrance. Once I get there, I'll start walking slowly. Um. So maybe like stealth roll slowly or okay. not stealth roll slowly no stealth roll sounds fair i'm not great at it stealth but... roll slowly okay sure uh and so victor starts walking down there while he's making that roll i mean the rest of you are following or going what what are you doing uh i, I think buzz you think on your feet real fast so <laughs> it's on you right <laughs> right Right. It's wait. It's on me to what now? Oh, to uh, uh, be able to chat with uh, troll and uh -huh. and uh, get our way through. Stealth roll, way. Victor. Okay. Yes. Good. You think got my back? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's a fail. Let me use a curious ticket though. Curious ticket to re-roll. Uh, nope. That's a fail. All right. So as as the three of you uh, start talking about the best approach here and how Buster can uh, talk to the troll and maybe outsmart it, Victor starts moving down towards the cave. And as he gets down towards the bottom of the depression, his eyes focused on the black emptiness of the entrance to this rocky cave. He misses entirely the old brittle leg bone that he mm. steps on with his boot and with a loud resonating crack that echoes out into the darkness around you, the bone breaks under your feet. Mm. Victor. I'd say surprise is probably. There is a huge roar that comes issuing out of the darkness of the cave but that's not all. 
Victor, because with the roar comes a very large boulder sailing straight towards you. Oh, oh shit. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Victor, did you did he get to take that tactile desensitizer I gave him? Oh, oh. that is a good point. Uh, I assumed Victor, I would, did you? I assumed I would have. Well, you go ahead and do that now, um, and say that we did that retroactively. So what? that means you get to ignore up to two wound penalties for ten minutes. Whoa, that's pretty wow. good. Yeah. So it's good. almost like you don't have any wounds at all. It's almost like that, but it's not entirely. However, he does have to make a roll when taking that. It is a infernal device, correct? Oh, oh it will Maybe. just light up your insides. I'm just swallowing a pill. How bad could it be? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, yes, you must. You must do a vigor roll. Okay, do a vigor roll. Look, Doc, if you say this is gonna cure me, I'll take it. But you if I die, I'm coming back to kill you. Oh, he will do this. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's a crit fail. Is Whoa! it really? You're lying. Stop it! Why would no. I lie about this? All right. Why Tell me what happens, Midas. Does it say in the description for that one? This. Dark. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Well, that's Wait. a malfunction. Oh right. Yeah. Uh, does uh, that item have a specific malfunction result? It sure doesn't. Okay. Really? Two point. So yeah. Okay. So roll a. Uh, Roll a d6. Okay. I got a six. Oh, okay, no. minor. The item fails to work until a repair roll is made as an action. One-time use items have no. no effect and are consumed. No, hold on. There, There is something for these pills. It's in a, uh, a separate paragraph, I believe. I, I, um, I've got it up. For, for crit it's, fails? It's in a separate section of, uh, of the infernal devices. Uh, Ari, I'm I, very I, curious. It just says I, imbibers must make a vigor roll when ingesting any of the liquids listed below. Critical fails on the roll and, and indicates a malfunction. Drinking a potion is an action. Right, uh, but... Hmm. And then there's tactile desensitizer under there, which is the drinker ignores up to two points of wound penalties for 10 minutes. So I think that's it. Okay, I mean, yeah, uh, you, you rolled a six. Yeah. yeah, and six is like the okay. doesn't matter. Yeah, all right. So one use items are, are consumed. It does nothing. You swallow Ooh. this gross tasting chalky pill and it makes you feel absolutely no better whatsoever. In fact, it hurts your stomach. That's what happened then, Victor. But right now there's a giant rock sailing towards you. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and do this roll. I'm gonna go ahead and deal this troll out its bennies. Rain. Uh, a 10 <laughs> is going to be a hit with a raise from a distance for Ooh. sure. Yeah, uh, that'll get me. So. How much do rocks hurt though? That aced. Come on. <laughs> uh, 22 damage. Rip. I mean, I, t I don't have any bennies. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a vigor roll for incapacitation, Victor. Okay. Oh. All right. God. Well, Victor's going to die. I'll you be have, fine. How's that boo boo uh, thing working? It's fine. My guts are inside, but now I've got I'm three more uses I can do before I'm out of power points. I'm smushed. Uh, th does this, this doesn't ace, does it? No, it does. Uh, yeah. yeah, it does. This would ace. It's a vigor a, roll. Oh, it's a vigor roll. It's a okay. vigor roll. You want it to ace a lot. Uh. Uh, but it minus my wound, which is just one. So yeah, it's just a six. A six? No, oh, All right. yeah. no your one. wounds are three. No, not yet. Uh, uh, or, I think or if right. he's incapacitated, it's a three, oh, right? Right, because he couldn't soak. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It is at a minus three. Oh, 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 I see what you're saying. Yeah, I yeah. Hate, I hate to, like, stop you from... No, that's no, still no. just a four. That's still a four, though. That is still a four, yes. Which is still a success, uh, but... You're gonna get injured again, Victor. So uh, give me a two d six roll. Oh my god! I'm making a lot of these rolls. Uh, and this is just is this minus my wins or what is this? It's just a regular roll. This, this is just two d six. It's on a table. Great. It's a seven. A seven. Okay. Uh, a seven is once again it catches you straight in the torso. Give me another d six roll. This makes if sense. If you got a two, it would take your balls off. 
What? It says that? Yeah, unmentionables. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> Wouldn't that be ironic? JP can mention them. But I, I can mention four. whatever I want. Yeah. I got a because four. Because they're Buchanan. A four? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> um, you just are... Uh, uh, this boulder hits you like a train, and you just go flying off to the side like a rag doll, Victor, tumbling over the bones and sprawling out. You are just completely akimbo. Everyone can see bruises and lumps forming on you immediately. You are battered. Your vigor is reduced a die type as well, which will also lower your toughness. Okay, not that that matters. I'm not gonna stand up anytime soon. <laughs> um, and... Oh my God. Um, okay. I, I, There's I more? I don't think you're unconscious. What? It's your choice. My, Maybe uh, his choice. he's, his he's choice. out of the battle and he may be unconscious. That's the up to the GM is what it says. Uh, I'm going to say, Victor, that I'll give you the opportunity to stay in this fight if you want. Okay. What, do you, you want to make another roll? No, I'll just say... Oh. Do you, do you want to stay in this fight, Victor? I mean, why would I say no? Of course I want to stay in the fight. <laughs> As that thing comes sailing out of the cave, a large, like, loping like a gorilla creature comes springing out and roars at all of you. Its rubbery purple skin just wrapped tautly over coiled ropes of sinewy muscle, a huge club with a spike on the end of it in one hand, and its stringy hair and gray dead eyes looking at you, Victor, and the three of you up at the edge of the depression as it bashes its club on the ground and <laughs> roars once more in challenge. We are in a combat. I think I got its attention. Celestina, so you, you still get a you still get a a card, but yeah. you don't get quick. Uh, Celestina, an eight of hearts. Midas, a jack of hearts. All right. That's Victor, a, a three of spades. Wait, Sorry. Why don't I get Why don't I get quick? Because you're incapacitated. I thought I wasn't. You are, wait. You yeah, are incapacitated. You're just not unconscious, right? Oh, oh, those are two different things. Okay. I, uh, did not know. Wait, wait, hold on. I, I might be doing this wrong. I'm not sure. Um, so he, if he did incapacitation, it says characters cannot take actions and might be unconscious, but the victim makes a vigor roll each day thereafter and isn't. Like, I, I mean, I'm gonna try and like fix him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll say we'll say then for the time being that you are you are knocked out. You're you're cool. you're you're unconscious. You still get your card. That's that makes sense. Similar. Buster, a jack of spades. And the troll, a four of diamonds. But I'll spend uh, no. I spend a Benny to redraw. I would. Use it. I, I'm going to spend too. a GM a Benny to redraw. It. Uh, it's a two of hearts. I'll spend another GM Benny. Yeah. Let's yeah, keep yeah. the two. Use, keep keep the two. A seven of diamonds. Well, that's not going to beat anybody. I'll spend one more. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Seven keep... of spades. Yeah, one more. Go for broke. All right, I'll go for broke. That's <laughs> my man. All in. Four Benny <laughs> on initiative. Nine of hearts. Nine of hearts <laughs> will beat one of you. Oh man. Me. Bamboozle. You know what? I'll spend my last Me. Benny. Let's what? come on. Let's do it. My last GM Benny, a king of spades. <laughs> okay. And now it gets to kill. All of uh, us. No, I Just don't have Victor. any Bennies left. <laughs> Just hulks me. It has two of them though. Uh, oh. so this is a new deck, up. right? Uh, this is a new deck. I reshuffled. Yeah, okay. Yes. Good. Uh, good. It's going to go first. Cool. Uh, so uh, you are out of the the picture here, Victor. Uh, wow. This thing is going to run up the hill directly at all three of you, standing up momentarily to its full eight foot whatever. It bellows once more and pounds its club over and over again on the ground. You can feel the vibrations of it through your feet. And as you stumble back, it is already flinging itself up the rise. You are not far enough away. Let's see, uh, all it basically needs to do is not roll a one on its run die. Come on, one. But it rolled a one on its run die. <laughs> <laughs> so it does not get close enough to hit all of you with its sweep attack. Instead, it is just going to throw its club at one, two is Buster, three, four is Midas, five, six is Celestina. At Celestina, 
Ooh, this is, times like these are when I'm glad I didn't take the major uh, trouble magnet hindrance. <laughs> That's an ace. You'll get there. It's fine. Uh, that is <laughs> a seven, uh, which is going to hit. And it is going to do... Oh, boy, that's an ace on the D12. Oh, barf! 17 damage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're muted or something, Celestina. Okay, well, what I said was I'm going to soak that. Oh. Okay, uh, well, what is your toughness first so we know how much you need to soak? Four. Four, so that is a hit with a raise, uh, with a raise with a raise. So that is a hit with three raises. You would be shaken and take three wounds. Uh-huh. Just yep. in that hole. Yeah. I missed that bucket. Okay, well, I got a four. <laughs> That's a success. I... That would soak one wound. It would. Could I have a, uh, I almost said a serious ticket, a curious ticket, a serious yes. ticket right now. Uh, so you <laughs> spent a penny to soak. You're spending a curious ticket to reroll. Yes. <gasps> I aced it. Ooh, that's yes. much better than what I thought Good. that was. <laughs> Uh, that would be an eight. I'll take an eight. It. That's a I'll success of the raise. You would yeah. soak two of the wounds. You're still shaken and wounded. As the club goes slinging through the air, spiraling towards you, you see the point on one end of it, slowing down in time as it seems like it's going to drive itself directly into the side of your head, Celestina. Huh. But you move to the side and instead it swipes across you as you move your neck back, just barely missing cutting your throat, and it opens a gash in your chest. You are shaken and wounded, but that is its turn. As it stands there and roars in fury, towering over all of you, next up is Buster. Oh, and then Midas. Shit, okay. Um, I'm gonna go out on a limb here. Uh, I'm going to try to do performance, and if nothing else, I'm going to try to, uh, I'm testing, okay. uh, essentially, and I want to try to distract, um, but I'm going to try to start, I'm going to sing a song, and I'm just going to hold up my hands and sing a song, and, and the song is going to be about everyone, we're not here to, to hurt you, we're just, this is, we're trying to, we're, we're trying to find a friend and all we want to do is find that friend and that's that's the song's just going to be as lyrical and as soft and lullaby-ish as i can possibly make it okay uh give me that performance role buster i, I gotta say i'm reading the situation pretty differently from you yeah <laughs> remember when i walked to its Where door and it killed me hey man <laughs> sun's going down big guy yeah <laughs> uh that is a seven a um, seven Okay, this will be a post. Uh, I'll use a curious ticket. All right, a curious ticket to reroll. Just don't crit fail. Yeah. I didn't crit fail. That's good. That's good. Um, uh, I'll stick. Oh, shit. Okay, I'll use a Benny. A Benny to reroll. Uh, I believe this is your last Benny, yeah, Buster. Yeah, it is. Guys, I have two casts of heal left. Seven. Don't heal me, Seven. Kevin. Okay, and performance is a spirit-based uh, skill uh, on your sheet? believe so. Unfortunately, the sheet doesn't say say which it is, but I believe it is uh, spirit. I think it's, I think it's spirit. All yeah. right, so it, it, it opposes it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, I'll spend one curious ticket. No, come on, man. Oh! <laughs> That's a crit fail. Yes! Actually, Yay! With the oh boy! Um, well, finally, so, one on the other side. So, um, that is definitely going to give you a role on the creative combat uh, yes. table, Buster. Not only is the thing, uh, you said you wanted to make it distracted? Yes. For vulnerable. I, I wanted to make it uh, distracted. Okay, so it is distracted now. Let's roll on creative combat. Will you roll two? I've got the I've got the table out. As do I. Nice. Uh, okay, what do I roll on that? Two d six. Two d six. Okay. That going around. Uh, I, that's an eleven. An Ooh. eleven. Insight. 
The hero Ooh. has new insight into the target's nature. Once during this encounter, she may add plus D6 to any trait roll made to directly attack, affect, or damage this foe. Uh, also, okay. what is our adventure card that Buzz drew? Uh, he can, uh, all allies within five uh, squares, essentially uh, uh, 25 feet, um, discard their shaken, stunned, distracted, or vulnerable status. Okay. Just remember, remember that, that. All right, so the thing is distracted by your singing. It doesn't seem to understand your words so much as the tone, and the tone is confusing and not what it expected. And not only is it distracted, you feel like you've learned a little bit about this thing and can maybe use that to your advantage, Buster. Is that it for you? Um, so Victor and Celestina are both shaken? I believe uh, so. I am, yeah. I'm unconscious. Right. And shaken. And shaken, okay, though, yeah. technically. That makes sense. I'm just wondering if I, but you, you're going, you have not gone yet, correct, Celestina? Uh, no. Do you, how many bennies do you have left? Two. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Use any time, so. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna hold on to it just for now because cool. okay. if someone else gets shaken. We the next up is Midas. A big bite. Okay, um, can I make it past this troll without being attacked by it? Uh, you're going to need to run in order to get enough space around it to get, you're trying to get to Victor, I assume, yes? Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna need to run oh, to boy. get there without uh, being attacked by it. I feel like I don't you love probably, rolling at a minus three, but you can probably just assume Victor's dead, and you should try to kill this thing. I feel. But, like. but you only need to uh, roll not a one, essentially, on your run die to make it over to. Yeah, Victor. but I think if I'm running there and I, then I'm rolling with a minus three, it's like Oof. pretty little chance of being useful. Um. All right, I'm just going to. Since it's distracted. I'm gonna try and um, I'm just gonna pull out a Buchanan ball and just try and uh, launch one at it, uh, empowered, and then use my motion to like get as far as I can to kind of go in that direction and move around to eventually move towards uh, Victor okay. next time. You're gonna fire an empowered Buchanan ball at this thing and then start moving around it to try to get to Victor. Yep. So give us a weird science roll, Midas. All right. Uh, give me a curious ticket. You got it. Reroll. Uh, okay. So that is, that's a five. A five a is a success. That'll hit. Roll damage. Okay. So that's going to be three D six. Yes. I aced on one of them. Okay. So that is. That is 16 damage. 16 damage. Okay, uh, that is a hit with a raise. So yes. your Buchanan ball flies out, burr, 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 shining brightly <laughs> as it shoots off through the air and hits it directly in the chest. It goes off like a shock wave that you can see rippling out across this thing's body as it gets staggered backwards and seems shaken, and you see that your Buchanan ball has blown a small hole clear through its torso, in one side, out the other. The thing is shaken and wounded, and then Midas, taking advantage of that, you begin to move around to circle around it, heading towards Victor, but you can't make it to him this round. All right, next up, uh, Celestina. You're muted again. Huzzah. Okay, uh, I would like to pull another what I already did, which is have Vika try and distra uh, uh, distract it for a support roll. Okay. And, um, and uh, I want to bolt it with uh, extra, with high, higher power modifier. Okay. All right. So ah! Vika comes streaking down out of the sky again from somewhere above you and gets right up in the troll's face, clawing and flapping her wings into its face as it brings up its huge ham hock hand to try and smack her out of the air, but Vika's already circled up. Give me athletics. Ah, that's a two. Uh, can I uh, get a curious ticket? You can. Well, that's a four. A four is a success. So Vika will give you a plus one to your spell casting roll, buying you the time to summon dark energy. So I'm at a minus one. 
Uh, that's a four. A four is a success. So yeah. you cast what again? Bolt. I, okay. I send some bugs out at him. All right, you send a flying swarm of biting, stinging, consuming insects out towards this troll. Yes. All right. Oh, that is a bad, not neat damage roll. That's only eight. Eight damage. Can I re-roll my damage? Yes. Yeah. With a curious ticket? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I want to. Okay. Uh, um, that is a one, two, three, four, twelve. It's better. Twelve for your damage. Yeah. Um, that is a hit, just shy of with a raise. So the thing was already shaken and wounded. It will take another wound. Uh, your bugs begin to fly and swarm all over, biting, stinging, tearing into its flesh, and you see wounds opening up all over its body as it roars and slaps at itself, honestly making everything worse and inflicting another wound upon itself. Anything else, Celestina? Uh, I want to move away from it. Uh, are you move backwards? Yes. Okay, you move your full movement backwards, trying to keep distance between you and it, leaving Buster between you and the troll. Get them, uh, Buster. <laughs> Victor, it is your turn. You roll in pain on the ground, and distantly you hear the sound of roaring and the shouts of your friend, but there is so much pain up there. It's so much nicer down here in the warm and the quiet, and that is where you remain. Next round, Celestina, an ace of diamonds. Woo. Nice. Midas, a three of clubs. Less nice. Victor, a joker. <laughs> we'll take it, the cow, nice. right. right. Each of you get a Benny, one for Victor, one for Celestina, one for Midas, one for Buster. And Buster, a 10 of hearts. The troll gets an eight of spades. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna spend one of its bennies to try and redraw a better card. A queen of diamonds, I will tell uh. So you can go at any point, Victor, uh, oh. although you can't really, cause you're still kind of incapacitated. So I like start... to do my bleeding early, so I'll bleed now, <laughs> thank you very much. It's gonna start with Celestina and then the troll. Uh, you could also uh. hold until after my turn in case I uh, Sorry. heal you. Really quickly, oh. at the end of last round, uh, as you watch, the troll is bleeding from the wounds in its body. Uh, I'm going to spend a curious ticket to reroll. Oh, right, it. it's a troll! Uh, I'm going to spend its Burn last it. Benny to reroll this. Six minus two is a four. As you watch, the whole from Midas's Buchanan ball that shot through its body just begins to knit and close itself. It is still bleeding from the insect wounds, but it is now looking a bit healthier than it did before. All right, Celestina, you're up. Uh, I want to do the same thing again. I think that's the most damage I have the potential to do. Okay. And it's working well for me right now. So Vika, Vika for support. Can I get a curious ticket for Vika? Um, you're gonna have Vika fly in again and hit it in the face? I want her to distract it, not necessarily hit it in the right, face. Right, right, no, I know. Uh, this oh. is going to be, but using the same technique over and over again, you're gonna be at a minus one for it this time. Who said anything about the same technique? Vika is real smart and she can fly <laughs> in different ways each time. <laughs> Uh, there's only so many times you can get uh, distracted by a bird flying into your face before you start to expect the bird's gonna fly into your space. Um, have you uh, met birds though? They're real nasty. So you want a curious ticket? Uh, yes, I do, and you got it, it doesn't matter. Uh, I okay. already it, it was worse. Okay, uh, Vika tries, but this time the troll is ready, and as she comes swooping down, it flings a hand up, just barely missing her as she squawks and pinwheels in the air to remain aloft. What now, Celestina? I'm, I want to bolt, bolt it in the face with right. uh, additional damage. Right in the face, right in the eyeballs. 
<laughs> can I have a, a curious ticket, please? <laughs> you can. Uh -oh. I'm gonna use a Benny. Oh, a Benny for Celestina to re-roll. <laughs> Where do I go? Okay, I'm gonna use one more Benny. One more Benny wow. to re-roll. No, it, I, no. <gasps> I just can't. All no, right, that's Celestina, a one and a two. <laughs> you, try, <laughs> you try and summon up the energy to power this. You do lose one power point for that. And uh, for whatever reason, at the last minute, your concern for Vika being almost pulled out of the sky interrupts your spell and the energy fizzles into the ether, useless and meaningless. Anything else you want to do? Step further away from it. You're going to move even further back. Yeah, is right. it moving forward? It hasn't gone yet. Oh, no, that, oh. Yeah, I'm gonna move back a little bit. Okay, all right, so you move back. It is now the troll's turn. So standing in front of it are Buster. Uh, Midas is trying to circle around on the side, but the <laughs> thing that hit, that hurt it most recently is Celestina. However, um, Buster, uh, I'm gonna say this thing is going to try to, uh, no, that's too complicated. Um, I'm going Shake to Shake my say hand? It's going, it's to gonna test. sing back at you. Oh. It's going to test you. Okay. It's essentially gonna run past you and just shove you to the ground in its mad rush to get to Celestina. So this is going okay. to be a, uh, this is gonna be an athletics test. Okay. Um, so. Uh, it, uh, oh, and it's wounded, and this is multi-action, so it's gonna be at a minus three. I'm gonna spend a curious ticket to re-roll that. Is it still distracted? No. Uh, it is distracted until the end of its turn, so it is at a minus five altogether. Solid narc. Yeah, it's definitely not gonna be able to do that. It seems enraged and completely out of focus. It comes rushing past you and just half-heartedly reaches out a huge tree trunk arm to just slap you to the side buster, but you duck under it just as it goes thundering up to Celestina and Celestina without its club, it still has claws and it just pounds down on the ground to try and get you to lose your feet, your footing so it can slash your legs out from underneath you. Can I uh, yeah. try to hit it? Uh, yes, it runs you can. Past me? it did run past you. Do you have a melee weapon equipped? Uh, I was just gonna punch it. Well, you can punch I, ha it. I have a knife. I could draw my knife out. Uh, I'll just punch it. You can punch it. You can punch it for sure. Yeah, this, yeah. this is going to do really good, I think. <laughs> you might as well try. Yep. Why don't you try roll. Rocky Balboa this thing? Go. <laughs> I did ace it. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's a 10. A 10 is a success with the raise, Buster. Yeah. Yes, punch this punch troll to death. That would be punch amazing. It punch yeah. it uh, Buster, death. did you want to spend a curious ticket to add your performance die to this uh, raise instead? Yes. Oh yes, wait, I you would. also have insight, so you can add a D6 oh, to one right. thing you do against this. That's Thank you also for true. Me. So including damage? Yeah, yeah including, including damage. damage. Oh wow. Oh, punch it to death. So let's see, that's two D6 and one D eight. Uh yeah, if you want to use your insight and the sawdust and showmanship setting rule, I have spent yes. the curious ticket. Let's get this damage yes. roll. Well, this is a curious oh. turn of events. Uh two D six and one D eight plus strength, right? Wait, no, I think it's no. Just the strength so is one of the d6s, right? You roll your strength, oh. plus you get your extra d8 right. and an extra d6 for insight. Except my strength is a d4. So it's a d4, d6, and a d8. Your strength is a d4? Yep. I didn't know that. Hey, strength buddies. Yeah. <laughs> Me too now, because yep. I'm dying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm the strongest one here. <laughs> You've always been the strongest one. Uh, that, <laughs> that could be way better. Can I get a curious ticket? You can. That's a 10 right now. It's pretty good. Oh, right. Damage. Not by much. Okay, that's better. Uh, if, uh, that's a 13. A 13 yeah. for damage? Yes. Uh, that's a hit with a raise, Buzz. <gasps> um, nice. <laughs> and I, uh, uh, so that's going to shake and wound it, and I'm all out of bennies. So, Buzz, it goes thundering by you and you duck under it, but you see, you notice it's too dumb to really protect its weak parts. And as its hand goes flying out over you, it reveals to you the soft, tender, 
a very hairy and smelly bit Ew. of flesh under its arm. And Buzz, you flip your shotgun around to the stock and just ram the wooden bit of it up into its armpit. And the thing goes staggering sideways and roars in pain and frustration as you feel tendons or ligaments pop underneath your blow. Yes. It is shaken again and we, has another wound. We Fuck tried yeah, it my but... way, but now I guess we gotta do it your way. And that interrupts its attack towards Celestina. So Whoa. that concludes the troll's turn. Big move, big Thank move. you, Buzz. Well done, Amazing. Buster. It is now your turn. Um, uh, Kill it. Yeah. Turn that shotgun around. Yeah, I'm gonna flip the shotgun around and take a shot. Ooh, I, I dig that. You can only do, I think, the one uh, round, because I don't remember you reloading since the last time you fired it. Well, um, I, I agree with you, although we were in the underground clock bunker for a long time, I would did, assume. You had fired it before that, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, you probably would have reloaded. So yeah. you can do two rounds if you want. Okay, um, I'll fire both barrels. All right, why not? It's a troll. Yeah, uh, okay, so. Gotta pay the troll toll. Right. All right, shooting, plus two. Uh, that's a five. I mean, five will hit, yeah. Five will hit. So that's a 3d6 plus four, because it's both barrels. Isn't this against parry, though? Uh, no, he, he essentially like stopped its, its movement just past him. Uh, I, I'm just going to say it kind of like its momentum carried it in between you and Celestina. So no, not against parry. So that's two fives and a four. That's 14. Two fives and a four. Wow. Uh, now we can all do the math together. Yeah. 14 <laughs> yeah. plus, plus four? No, that's... Uh, oh, wait. Two fives and a four plus four. Yeah, 18. 18. That is a success with two raises, Buster. You fire directly into this thing's chest, and it just gore explodes outwards as it clutches its arms to its body to try and hold itself together. It staggers once, it staggers a second time, and collapses to the ground. I'm... Midas? Oh, sorry, Buster, you want to finish your turn? No, no, yeah, I just want to eye it to see if things start restitching again. Right now, it's still. Okay. Midas? Midas is gonna make his way over to Victor and try and banish some boo-boos. You can definitely do that now. So you make your way over to him, give us your weird science roll. Okay. He pulls out Buchanan's boo-boo banisher. <laughs> I'm ready for the Aced sweet it on kiss. the eight. Oh shit, yeah. Uh, so that is a 10. A 10 is a success with a raise, so. The Boo Boo Banisher does its work, mechanical arms and limbs and little surgical implements springing out of it, dressing your wound, cleaning it, and then finally at the end, giving uh, it a full kiss uh, with mechanical lips. You are healed of two wounds, Victor. Wow. That's huge. And uh, uh, that's, that's my last PowerPoint, so from well, here on out, it's, it's shortened. Well spent, Midas. Uh, Victor. You are now Perfect. back up and in action, and you do have a Joker. What, if anything, would you like to do? Could also stay on hold if you want. Yeah, I guess I'll stay on hold. Yeah, keep that Joker, why not? Yeah. All right, so you go on hold. Um, Buster, Yeah. as you watch, something does seem to happen. Um, on. Uh, eight, let's see, minus three. It's no longer distracted. So that's a five. Um, as you watch the the blood pooling out from it, uh, lying face down on the ground, begins to move and retract back into its body. And the thing puts one arm up and then another, and then shakily pulls itself up on its forearms and starts standing back to its feet, looking with murderous intent directly at you, Buster. Celestina. And it stands back up. It decides yeah. to go for Victor again. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, kill this guy. Celestina, a six of diamonds. <laughs> Midas. Oh, wait, wait. Sorry. Nope. New deck. Joker was drawn. Boop, boop, boop. Ba doop, boop, ba doop, boop. Different deck. Different deck. There, there's. Oh, you have them. Celestina, a king of clubs. I like Ooh, this better. Nice. Thank you. Midas, a six of hearts. 
Victor, you are still on hold with your Joker. Buster, an Ace of Hearts. The Troll, a Six of Clubs. And me with no way to change that. Would anyone else like to redraw? Nah. I'm right. ahead of the thing, and that's what matters. Then first up is going to be Buster. Or uh, Victor. I, yeah, I, I think I'm just going to go now. Wait, no, Buster's first. Let's just have Buster. He's right there. Buster is right next to it. Yeah. The troll is back on its feet. It seems to be able to regenerate very rapidly. That's cool. I fired both barrels of my shotgun. Um, oh. <laughs> so uh, I will reload and then take a shot. So... Uh, so that's multi-action yep. uh, penalty. Um, so it is an action to reload and yeah, then fire your shot. Essentially it's a straight roll since you don't get the bonus for the shot, the shooting with the shotgun of, right. because of multi-action. Right, okay. Um, I would like a curious ticket, please. A curious ticket, yes. Reroll. Um, does anyone want I mean, Celestina, you've seen this up here, at least. Um, is anyone trying to figure out how to stop this thing? Well, I mean, I was, yes. I guess I could go on hold. Can I say something as a free action? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I Then I want to, instead of firing, sorry, can I take? Uh, yep, curious to get back. Yeah. Boop, boop, boop. Um, sorry, can, I'll just want to yell out to Celestina and just be like, uh, uh. Light it up, princess. This thing needs princess. to be on. F yes, you're you're the Celestina. You're the princess. Just light it up. Like we need this thing on fire to keep things burning, right? Okay. Yes. How do you know that, Buster? Because I saw it restitching. <laughs> He's played a lot of RPGs. <laughs> well, I saw it. my 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 belief is that as wounds wounds can be healed, but if it's continually being wounded, it will at least keep it down. Um, yes, but the fire bit, though, why, why that? Well, because that? Bolt, she did Bolt, and it restitched from Bolt. It didn't keep, yes, it didn't but keep that was, um, it. Oh. Give me, give me a common knowledge roll at a minus two, Buster. Sure. Uh, that's a one. Curious ticket? <laughs> sure. You guys have five remaining. Wow, we had a lot. Wow. Yeah, you did. Wow. You did have oh my a lot. Goodness. You my don't have them. You said a minus two? Yes. That's a one. Oh. <laughs> okay. Three. Um, so Buster, yeah. I will say you can definitely know you definitely know that what you are doing currently is not enough to keep this thing down. You can put it down, but it's not keeping it down. So I will say you can shout out that you need to do something different or somebody needs to come up with a plan, but you are not uh, with it enough to know what to okay. do to it. Okay, that's fair. So then what I, I will yell out, um, uh, Celestina, he, you hit it with everything you got. Hit it with something heavy, something big enough to take it out. Um, and I will, I guess, n no, I, I retconned what I, I retconned No, that's okay. Thing. We'll spend a curious ticket so you can re-roll your shooting roll. Okay, okay. One more curious ticket. Reroll that shooting roll. Four left. Dang it. Please spend your curious tickets. Please, yeah. please. The show um. is about to begin. <laughs> Get rid of all the bennies and all the curious tickets. I, Build your yeah. own red zone, baby. I did not do it. I rolled a three, so. Um, okay. Your shot fires off uh, wildly into the air as the thing suddenly moves with more agility than you were expecting and zooms in towards you, sending you staggering back and your shot going wide. Uh, that is it for Buster. Next up will be Celestina, unless Victor wants to go. <clears throat> Celestina, you can go first. Okay. So, Bolt has the most ability to do damage, uh, the most damage. But elemental manipulation has more ability to maintain uh, damage. But, I mean, Celestina doesn't know about fire, so I feel like she would try to bolt again. With Do you want to make an occult roll or sure. anything to see if you have a guess? Yeah, if I can do that, yeah. Yeah, you've seen it stitch itself up twice now, so That's something true. is That's going true. on here. 
Well, um, Guys, that, we've all I got read the monster's manual. Just a one. Come on. Could I have a curious ticket? You can. Three remain. Oh, there we go. I aced it on both guy. Uh, that is eight. Some creatures, Celestina, have the ability to regenerate from almost any wound, even sometimes a killing blow, unless the wound is dealt by fire or the beast is put to flame once it is dropped. Oh, okay. That's what I was saying. <laughs> oh, I didn't understand. I had to uh, figure it out in Romanian. <laughs> I'm, that only got picked up by Megan's yeah, mic. Yeah, yeah. And it's distant and faded. It's yeah. wounded. <laughs> I, I think your mic has like a sound cap and you go it's over zoom. it and it's like, no, nope, it's I'm very loud. Zoom All right, um, loud. Celestina, what do you want to do? I want to hit it with some fire uh, with additional damage if I can. I think I can do that on this one. On elemental manipulation? Uh huh. I don't think you can. Cannot. Uh! Okay, fine. I won't. I will just attempt to do this. All right. So before you do that, I will also say, since you can't do a lot of damage with fire, but you can set it on fire after enough damage has been done, if you go on hold and wait <sighs> for it to happen, you could then set it alight. I'm not trying to give you the answer. I'm just no, trying I do this. to encourage you to think tactically. He's given us the answer. Victor, um, shoot it. Yeah. I, I, okay. Cool. So hearing. <laughs> so Celestina um, goes on hold. I like. I like how I was all like, Celestina, kill it, and Celestina's like, Victor, kill it. <laughs> we know Wait, where this is going. Christopher, kill it. <laughs> Wait, did I you mention the Christopher? Victor. Did you mention the fire part? I light it on fire once you kill it. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, so I think Victor is still like. I don't think he stood up yet. He's still on the ground collecting what's left of his body. Um, so he's going to pick up, take his revolver out of the holster, and since Midas is still next to him, he's going to say, all right, Doc, I need to thank you, first of all. Second of all, I need you to spin this. So I just want Midas to go like this, because he is basically using his other hand to hold his guts in. Let's give it a go. <laughs> and so as that spins, he's going to cast Ammo Whammy. OK. Um, so let me do that first. Make that roll. Uh, that's an ace. Actually, you that's need to unshake ace. first, I think. Oh. If only I could Actually, unshake. Actually, no. He doesn't have to unshake because he's going <laughs> to automatically unshake. Oh, what? spending the adventure card to unshake. So, uh, was anyone else shaken or had another status effect on them? I have uh... a tea. Well, that's not going to do it, but Victor now has a shot at this. So, <laughs> well spent, Buster. I never okay, sure. before, I just remembered. Okay, well... Now you're unshaken. Also, oh, in the future, remember to unshake. Also, I didn't unshake for the troll, so we're all even. <laughs> um, so, Victor, you hear Buzz shouting out uh, for you to listen to Celestina and take the shot. You rally up, and you are ready. I'm so, casting ammo whammy. Also, Midas is really good at spinning this, because I've aced three times. You have a joker, so you oh, get a yes. plus two to attack, or to trait rolls and damage. Okay, so that's that's success for the raise, just casting the spell. Okay, so you cast am ammo whammy with the raise. Midas sends your gun spinning, and as it spins, two runes light up on the gun. Which two? Uh, I'm going to light up um, uh, Loaded for Bear and a new one called Sacramento Surprise. Oh, the old it... Sacramento Surprise. It's one I learned out west. Um, uh, I'm going to give it an elemental... Uh, 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 addition to the bullet, which is fire. Well so, done. I'm just gonna take a shot at that big, big troll. Um, uh, I guess I is it too late to say to, I want to take two shots? Uh, n no, because you get to do your casting without oh, yeah, a, yeah. a multi action penalty, so you can still take right. two shots if you want. Then I shall. So both of these shots would be at a minus two then. Uh, right, but I have a joker. Both of these shots are a straight roll then. Right. Jokers are nice. <laughs> yes, they are. Uh, it's an ace on a D8. Okay. Uh, that's a one. Uh, so nine. So nine hit with a raise. raise. So let's roll damage. So I believe that's uh, 2D8 plus a D6 plus two, all fire damage. Yep. Correct. Great. <laughs> you could use a curious ticket to up. 
Oh, well, no, my, my, He's I don't have a D8 in performance. D6. Yeah. Oh. I'm not like you, Buzz. I'm not a performance guy. Uh, but so you that is. Use your repair instead. That is fifth, six, uh, plus the Jokers, two more. Yeah. Can we count that? 17. 17. 17 damage is a hit with two raises. So, Victor, from the ground, as Midas spins your gun and the runes light up, suddenly the barrel of your gun is charged with flame as you line up a shot directly between the thing's shoulder blades as it raises its arms up and prepares to smash Buster into the ground and then tear Celestina's head off right after that. You fire your shot and a flaming arc of light shoots out and hits the thing directly in the back and it roars as it staggers forward and down to the ground as its skin begins to crisp and flame, and it tries to push itself up back to standing, tries to move itself over towards you, Buster, reaching out with its hand, now lighting up on fire before it collapses to the ground, a flaming and inert pile of flesh. Well done, oh, folks. I did not <sighs> like that thing. Uh, okay. Nice, nice work, Midas. How you doing, Victor? Jesus. Oh, I'm yeah. peachy cane, as they say. Would you try yeah. not to die next time? Yeah, that'd be, well, that'd be great. Maybe take a with, step back. With Midas Buchanan's patented boo-boo banisher, uh, dying is a thing of the past. Listen, Doc, you could <laughs> smooch me any time. You want to save my life. Thanks. I'm going to remember that one. Okay. Let's uh, see if we can find Lottie in here. Yes. So you all move inside of the cave, dark and fetid with wet, heavy, rotten smelling air. There is not much in here except for more bones and what looks like in the back corner, a pile of troll waste, wet and shining in the darkness. Apart from those things, there is just a large, rotten-looking, woven basket, still fairly tough, over in the corner, and there is movement coming from within that basket. This thing literally sheets where it eats. Yeah. What? Let's get that basket, I guess. Yeah. I hope there's not like baby troll in there, right? right. <laughs> yeah. Let's just let's just be a little more careful this time. Go right, open so it. So you okay. head over to the basket? Yeah. Okay, so Victor, you've got your gun trained on it. Celestina, you reached over to pull the well, lid off of it. First, hello? <laughs> Is uh, anyone named Lottie in basket? <laughs> okay, that sounds like a dog. I will go and open. You open the basket and peer inside and you see a golden blonde Little Pomeranian looking up at you, wagging its tail back and forth with its tongue <gasps> out. <laughs> oh, well, the this? This, this is the cutest thing I've ever seen. What's your name, dog? You you speak uh, language? You can Lottie? see it has some sort of, you can't understand it. You can no, see no, no. it has <laughs> some <laughs> sort like Who's of trapped leather in the well? band around its neck. Oh, it has a thing. Uh, can I look at it, the thing? The uh, you look at it and stamped into the back of the band of leather just behind its head is the word body. L-O-T-T-I-E. Uh, did uh, Winifred mention that Lottie was dark? No. Well, I, I guess that she didn't specifically say when if, uh, that Lottie wasn't a dog. She said right. she was a golden haired young deer about six years old, maybe. Yes. All right, uh, uh, Vika, don't get jealous. Just picking up Doc. And I'm going to pick up the Pomeranian. You pick up Lottie, and she, like, sighs and, and, and oh. happily and licks your face and looks oh, over at the three of you as well. And as you all look at her, her Midas eyes goes over to pet the dog. begin to glow with white, intense light. And you oh. all feel uh -oh. images bombarding your brain. And that is where we will end. Oh tonight. God, oh God, what did we do? But 
that is not all, folks, because the mysterious strangers in chat unlocked Manifest Your Destiny, our final reward tier for the evening. Lottie is going to impart a very powerful secret about Ooh. the Shadowlands into all of your brains. Ooh. But we'll have to wait until next time to see what that is. Very quickly, we have, uh, looks like two more toasts to, to get out of the way here at the end. We'll not get out of the way to knock out here. Um, this is from Yanto7. Yanto7 would like us to toast uh, to the tune of I Got Five on it, which I don't know well enough to do the whole way through. I really only know the chorus. I got five on it. Grab a toy, let's not stall. I got five on it, messing with my Buchanan ball. I got five <laughs> on it, we're stuck in hunting grounds. I got five on it, Christopher, let's ace on all our rounds. Great job so far, folks. <laughs> and knock them down. Thank you very much, Yanto7. And thanks for the uh, tip there, DJ Regular. BSB Care would like us to toast. I'm Christopher. Set them up and knock them down. <laughs> Set them up yeah. and knock them down. Thanks very much, BSB Care. Oh, and thank you to all of you mysterious strangers out there. Uh, thank you for the tips. Thank you for the subs. Thank you for just being here. You guys unlocked uh, some very helpful things for the party tonight, which they clearly needed because it was a bit touch and go there uh, from time to time. What? Uh, we never had any trouble. <laughs> no, no, no Fine. trouble whatsoever. Uh, perhaps you're all just feeling a bit coconut shy tonight. Um, thank you guys. Thank you for the unlocks. Thank you for being here. Thank you to our mods. Uh, you guys are amazing. Thank you for the help behind the scenes that allows Dom to play in the game instead of running the game while playing the game, which he still does a little bit, but not anywhere near <laughs> as much as he would have to, if not for you all. So thank you very much for that. Thank you to my players for sitting here and surviving not just a mana to attack, not just two mana to attacks, not struggling through the Manitou infested planes, but also taking down a full on troll as well and rescuing Lottie. Uh -huh. Well done, folks. They're still not out of the hunting grounds yet. Hell, they're not even out of the shadow lands of the hunting grounds, whatever and wherever those may be. Our lost and waylaid carnival performers still have a long way to go, but it's one step at a time and one foot in front of the other, <laughs> no matter how horrific the surroundings may be. But we'll have to join up with them next week at 8 p.m. Pacific time here on twitch.tv slash saving throw show. Very quickly, before we go, Dom, what can folks look forward to next here on Saving Throw? They can look forward to whatever we do on Friday next week. <laughs> oh, all right. We've got a little bit of space and time here, folks. So stay tuned to our social. There's always a chance we might put up a surprise bit of entertainment. You never know, but Definitely join us next Friday at 8 p.m. Pacific time here on twitch.tv slash saving throw show for more wild cards. Spread the word about the show. You can use the hashtag wildcardsrpg. Follow the wildcards account at wildcardsrpg on all social media platforms. Follow saving throw for even more encompassing information about all the things we have offering up now and in the future at saving throw show on all your social media platforms of choice. Anything else? Go vote. Yes. Yeah. Please go vote. Go vote. If you Please are vote. an American viewer of ours, make sure you are registered. Mm. Make sure that you have a plan. And please, please, please vote. We will not tell you how to vote, but I will say. But like we all know, right? Like, don't vote for the racist dude. I will say, <laughs> vote, vote as though you are not the only person who is going to be affected by your vote. I'm a big yes. fan of compassion. And I, I think that keeping that in mind when you make these decisions is an important thing. But that's just my opinion. Really, we want you to be engaged in the process. We want you registered. We want you to have a plan, even if you're already registered. I, I work at a library and today, a woman who's been registered for 20 years called because she was no longer registered and she was trying to figure out what she could do. So make sure you are registered. Everything's up in the air right now. Make sure you have a plan. 
make sure it happens, folks. It's very, very important. And to everyone else who's outside of the country, you can't vote, but you can call 1-900-AMERICA, please, and cast your uh, fake vote for um, our political uh, race. It actually calls a random person in America, and then you can tell them to please vote. <laughs> none of that is none please of that's don't actually do that. true. Please don't call 1-900-AMERICA, oh, please. I have no idea. way too many numbers. I, we I don't know we really need to buy either. that because we could make a lot of money at it. But it's um, <laughs> way too many numbers. We I will do that. say uh, it's a 900 number. One nine hundred America. That's like the perfect amount of numbers. Well, I thought there was another uh, word after America, America. Please. Oh, yeah, America, America, please. please. Oh, that's okay. way too many numbers. Please, yeah. America. Well, it just cuts off at America. It, whatever. PLZ. Anyways, I will say um, it looks like I, I did the counting. It looks like we unlocked the sub goal for tonight. <gasps> Dom Yay! Dom! So we unlocked a Dom, a Dom song. Dom song. I could use a Dom song. I could you use a Dom means. song. Dom is going to be hard at work this week, learning a new cowboy tune to entertain us next time as Definitely they travel through the hunting grounds. Don't have anything else I have to do this week. Cool. He doesn't have anything else he has to do this week. He's very excited. So thank you all. Thank you again for joining us. Please do continue to spread the word about the show. Please do join us. We love having you guys here. You're a fantastic community. And we are so beyond thrilled to have you all here as part of our audience week after week. We do this for you. I mean, it's for us, but it wouldn't be as much fun if you weren't out there too. So thank you guys. Thank you to my players. And we leave you with finger guns. <laughs> 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 they shoot fire and annihilate. Whoa. Surprise.